one, it is JDF. Listen, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I just pushed record, so I'm going to speak from the heart. I think today we're going to talk about being yourself and being you. And the hardest thing to do is to be transparent. I think, for me at least, I was always stuck in this world way back in the days, uh, growing up as a kid, of not saying no or being the yes man. Um, but you know what transparency is all about? is getting down to the bottom of the problem. If you have an issue with someone, honestly, the best thing to do is just go and talk to that person, confront that person, not confrontation, there's a difference, just confront, be transparent and ask them, hey, you know, instead of all the gossiping and all of this and all of that, is there an issue that we're having or is there a problem and then you can work it out. So uh, sometimes I think people aren't transparent. And I know we all have to wear a mask in life. I know that. I get it. Because you can't say, how your day? how's your day going? You're going to be like, my day's crap. How's your day? I get it. We all have a mask. But at least being transparent and being a man of your word. Those two things, I think, will make you the toughest, biggest, baddest man or woman on the planet. Is because, number one, you can't buy trust. You can't buy your word. If you break it. It's broken. No one's going to believe in you. No one's going to trust you. So that has to be built from the beginning. If you say something, you got to do it. Just don't say it because it's getting you out of a situation. If you say it, then do it. That's your word, right? It's gold. It's priceless. You can't pay for that back. Also, it's not for sale, right? So being a man of your word and then also just being transparent. You know, sometimes you got to say no. Um, don't just be the yes man. I used to be out there and say, oh, I'll do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. The only problem is I said yes, and I'm not going to let people down. So that's where my issue was back then. So I learned just now to be you. Be you, but also be transparent. Be a man or a woman of your word. If you say something, then do it. Uh, and if you don't, then you need to own up. You need to step up and be responsible. There's no one better that I respect than someone stepping up and saying, you know what? I own that. That was my mistake. I apologize for that. What can I do to make it better? Sometimes we got to own up to our mistakes and there's a lot of people that don't do it. So that's what I think we're talking about is being a man of your word, being transparent and just uh, own up on your own BS. You know what I mean? All right. That's all that's on my heart. Have a good day you until you get older bro because when you get older you look back on your life you realize yo you you should have had a dad for that like you talk to somebody who had a dad in their life yo what you want to be when you grow up they want to be realistic stuff i want to be a fireman i want to be a policeman i want to be a teacher ask me what i want to be i ain't have no dad i want to be a power ranger <laughs> I, be a power. I ain't have a dad to say that's not a real thing i really was i, I was in the backyard practicing and shit putting my shit out Master Don, like Master Don. I would have been successful if I would have had a dad and be like, yo, read this book about man. Nah, fuck that book, son. I'm trying to save the fucking world from the putties, man. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I noticed you never know how much your dad means to you until you get older, bro. What's going on, everybody? Jesus, man, I didn't have time to prep like I normally do, but we still going to have a great show. Let's see the audience. Let's check in, see who we got. We got 85% JDF, 15% Juicer. Shout out to the Juice Gang in the building. Um, people are like, hey, who are the Juicers? And the Juicers are like, who, who, what's going on with this JDF thing? All right, both of you groups should be concerned because juicers right the, these are the people who follow xqc whose divorce we hope it's not a divorce if it turned out to be a divorce it's gonna be bad i see we got some cowgirl fans in here um xqc is the biggest streamer in the world you know i see i got ninety four thousand people in here he'll probably have a million people watching per stream that's just how big uh xqc is and as of recently uh when i covered his divorce it was about what 26 of y'all in here and i'm trying to explain to y'all 
hey, this is a really big deal. And people were like, who is XQC? I'm like, you don't know who XQ, you don't know Mr. Cow? And I'm like, oh gosh, let me, let me show y'all who Mr. Cow is, right? Let me show y'all who Mr. Cow is. And this is Mr. Cow. And this is Adept, or as they say, Adepter. Uh, because I learned today that Mr. Cow banned people from saying Adept in his chat. <laughs> So they call her Adepter or HDMI or some variation of that just to say it in the chat. And I actually checked in on uh, Mr. XQC, Mr. Cow, and I couldn't write. I could not. Uh, let me let me shrink this down, guys. I could not write a comment like I wanted to. I couldn't go in and be like, hey, Mr. Cow, um, big supporter. I'm covering your divorce. Uh, I know you can't talk because Adepter wanted you to, you know, put the gag order on you. So I'm covering it. And what happened with me covering it, guys, it ended up going viral. So this is the this is the headline. And leaked divorce filings prevent XQC from discussing a debt to split on Twitch. Like when this guy streams, he got like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people watching. But I seen one of them. He had like 200,000 people. I couldn't even imagine that many eyeballs on me at once. But this guy, Brad Norton, who I reached out to, he was kind enough to post this. And if you scroll down, right, you scroll, you read, and you're like, what the hell is this? Through a divorce document obtained by publicly, exa publicly examined by Henry Resilient on YouTube, we can clearly see a depth petitioner and Mr. Cow married back in 2020. So that's what that was all about. And this case is going to be big as Johnny Depp. And they've already put the kibosh on getting it filmed. But this is a monumental case, guys. So those are the people from the Juice Gang in here. So Juice Gang, this may this not going to be a super uh, Juice Gang uh, stream. But I'm definitely going to stream Juice for Juice Gang Sunday at 2 p.m. Okay? 2 p.m. Honestly, I've never heard of Mr. Cow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and and because of that, right? Because of me covering Mr. Cow, right? You let's go to my YouTube. Let's go to my YouTube channel. And we're gonna check my stats, right? My stats, my stats went up because no one's covering Mr. Cow's divorce, or people are covering it, but they don't have the um they don't have the the documents. Okay. So if you look at my tab, you will notice. This stream right here has 149,000 views, right? Like, God, remember, 26 people are there, 149,000 views later. And the other one on Mr. Cow is, has 109,000. So when I tell you there's some huge interest in it, there's some huge interest because it's very important. And some people posted my story on Reddit, and I'm really appreciative of all the people. So Juice Gang should be here because uh, J JDF, it was rumored that, you know, even I was like, hey, did he did he delete himself because of divorce? And then we started learning some new stuff. So even though Mr. Cow is probably like a gazillionaire, he's dropping half a million on uh, the games or whatever. Divorce is definitely going to impact him in a significant way. So shout out to the Juice Gang. Let's get to the early contributors in the building because I saw some of y'all. Let's. First, let me acknowledge the actual King Smith, right? Everyone knows I'm going through a divorce. And the actual King Smith saw my video and he sent me a cash app for $20. And he said, for more cupcake pans, just kidding, great lives. All right, thank you, actual King Smith. And I did a collab with him and talked about marriage, divorce, and you know my perspective on dating. And Mr. Cow is probably have, having a new outlook on dating and probably e even bigger outlook on cohabitation as that is going to be uh, pivotal in his potential divorce case. So thank you, actual King Smith, which puts you as a sponsor. But shout out to my guy, Classy Beats, though, right? Classy Beats been supporting me, you know, A1 from day one streaming. Uh, check him out if you need a beat. What does he say? This going to be another good one. Fire emoji. Yes, we got a good one because I have new information on JDF straight from a very credible source who wants to remain anonymous at this point, but very credible. Uh, what else does my early contributors say? We got, see, we got my guy Dust Productions in the building. And what does he say? What's up, Henry? Good job to see you tonight. Good. Nice to see you too, man. I appreciate you, Dust Productions. This is one of our 
our biggest contributors of the show. And, you know, he's always been here, even on the Juice Gang stuff. He was there that night getting it before everyone else, before it went viral. Dust was definitely down there. And what? who else? We got a new person. Okay, uh, Robin 3. Is this the Robin, the one I told to go become uh, a lawyer? I don't know. Um, hey, Henry. Glad you, glad to have you back on the JDF stuff. Thanks for creating this content. Yeah, Robin, I had to take a break. If you saw that last JDF stream, I got emotional. I went off the rails. I was borderline on tears. I had sunglasses. I was about to, oh, it was about to be waterworks, talking about JDF, talking about Shayla, talking about my cousin, talking about my grandfather choosing to just not want to be here no more. It was a lot of death in that live stream. And it broke me down. Like I had to like, take a break you know i couldn't even come back to it so i just like let me just go to mr kyle and his divorce because it was getting too heavy for me I, i'm not i'm not lying if you saw that live you probably saw me do like what like two or three commercial breaks that uh, thank you robin for the five dollar donation i appreciate you uh who else we got up in here we got just 10 for 20 with the two dollar uh donation what does just 10 say just pray for the second coming of christ heart emoji jdf yes you know if they say you're gonna come back at any moment any moment you never know you never know um who else we got up in here i see uh we have justin oh what does he what does he say i'm just stopping by i'm catching the replay and we'll watch it later just wanted to contribute thank you justin oh man i appreciate you because you didn't have to do that man you did not have to do it but you did and we appreciative and what are we gonna get into today guys Shout out to Justin O. Shout out to all the contributors. Let me put some respect on uh, Mr. King Smith's name for being the sponsor today. And shout out to all y'all for being here on this Friday night. And what, what's everyone got going on for the weekend? Anything good? Anything good for the weekend I should be watching? Who's watching The Last of Us? Last of Us. Oh, look, I know I'm a little older. But that if that's not one of the best cinematic video games, I don't know what is. And yes, I, I used to play video games a lot, a lot, a lot. And that's one of my favorites. So when I saw the adaptation, it's actually fire. It is fire. And I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, what do I have for you today? It is going to be a lot. Someone called our boy Tony a liar. Could you believe it? You know, you know, the guy who told me you shouldn't be investigating too much. Whoa, 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 Tony, Tony, calm down, man. Calm down, Tony. Calm down. I'm I'm not releasing private information. Certain things have to be kept private. Look, I, I get Tony. Tony, look, I'm just doing do a little digging. You dig, bro. You like to dig. Whoa, Tony, Tony, Tony. Look, man, you want me to look? You, you thought I was gonna stop digging. You know I'm gonna keep digging, right? You know they say I'm a good investigator, and I say yeah, of of course, of course, of course, of course I'm good. Okay, I get to the bottom of stuff. So we gonna get into everything. Okay, <laughs> someone said Tony. <laughs> Look, man, Tony, we got a whole soundboard of Tony and it's I would have made it much better, but I didn't really have time to prep. But look, guys, look, we you shouldn't be investigating too much. That is tough, right? You investigate in someone who, who expire under like what people say, mysterious circumstances. And then this Tony guy come up talking about he is his BFF. And then he, you know, he tells me I shouldn't be digging. He says I should keep it private, you know. And then, then he came out the gate like this. What is going on? I'm like, hey, hey, what, what, what do you mean, Tony? I'm just, I'm doing my job, man. You want me to get to the bottom of it? He was like, what is going on? Uh, well, look, Tony, Tony, calm down, Tony. Anyway, hopefully you guys saw the shorts I cut on Tony. Tony is going forever be a part of the show. Tony about to drop back in the chat. No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, Tony ain't dropping back in the chat. He lied to me, guys. He lied. He li look. He lied. And I got two people today saying, oh, he lied. <laughs> and I'm like, did he really? And they're like, yeah. All right. So what do I got for you guys? Let's let's go through it. Let's go through it. We talked about the Juice Gang. Shout out to the Juice Gang. Juice Gang, if y'all want to check out right now, all good. Just hit the like button on your way out because we about to just do JDF. And then Juice Gang will definitely have your day. You will have your day on Sunday in Juice Gang. Email me any. Look, XQC does not have a voice right now. We know he can't talk. So I heard that Adapter uh, said his fan sent her fans to attack him or something. If you got proof of that, if she got, send it to me so we could talk about it on Sunday because it's some new stuff coming out. Yes, I didn't get the love of my life yet, but it's coming. Uh, 
Juice Juice Gang, if you want to check out, hit the like button. If you want to stick around, it's going to get dark because we're going to be talking about some heavy stuff. So what do I have for you guys? Because you know me. I got, look, man, I get so many trolls. I get tro I get trolls, guys. You know who trolling me now? Do you do you know who? Do you know who is trolling me now? It is none other than this person right here. This is Shauna Carroll. Why is she trolling me? All right, so we got Shauna. She trolling me hard. What else we got? We gonna talk about uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? We are gonna talk about this guy right here that no one knows because it's just this is this is Casey Hobson. We are gonna talk about Casey, and we also gonna talk about his brother Justin Hobson. And we also got some JDF videos because remember at the end of last stream, I talked about how he was on Ambien and Ambien mixed with alcohol equals you may not want to be here anymore. So that's what we have going on. And when I get information of people saying, oh, he was on Ambien. So I start going through his, his videos just to see if he would say anything to indicate to me that he was on Ambien. And of course, I found some what I would call video proof. But, you know, y'all be the judge. Y'all be the judge. We're going to end the post. Shout out to the Juice Gang. Hopefully, y'all stick around. But, you know, if y'all dip out, all good. Um, but both of your audiences, y'all, are after the same thing. The truth. And, yeah. Uh-oh. Someone, someone talking about their experience on Ambien. Um, and let's, let's go back to Just 10 for 20. What does he say? He says, I can't watch JDF stuff anymore, but pray every night. Man, look, just for 10, I am getting there. It is really hard for me sometimes, but I just, I, I try to get through it. And it, it's gotten a little easier, but now I got new information where it's just like, look, when I tell you guys, JDF was really trying to change his life. He was really trying to change his night life okay and he just he just had a bad moment and that's all it takes is a bad moment and now he's not here anymore but let's do a lighter note for y'all who don't know who i am i'm henry resilient i the breaker of xqc mr cal divorce even though it's public record um but i'm the seeker of truth i was an investigator not a private investigator as i saw uh, some people say he's, he wasn't a private investigator. It's like, no, I never was a private investigator. I worked for a company, usually a private investigator. They're, they're doing their own thing. They're contracted. I had a salary, benefits, retirement, all that good stuff. It was about 20 of us, 20 investigators uh, investigating various things. I was the money man, you know, the bird man, get that hand rub, you know, all about the money. Okay. And in doing so, I just would, people wanted money from my company or my company wanted money from them. They send me out, collect the facts. I interview people, write a report, yada, yada, yada. I was good after five years, got promoted. So I started teaching other people how to investigate, other people how to do it. And that's where I'm at. And y'all know I'm going through a divorce and you know, I got my daughter. Well, I don't got my daughter tonight. So we good. We, we can go, we can go all night, all night. Uh oh, I see we got beef in the chat. Uh, if people start arguing, just time them out, mods. Just, just time them out. All right. Um, but yeah, I don't got my daughter. But look, you want to hear something crazy about my daughter? Her birthday's coming up, guys. That's right. She's going to turn three. And she said, Daddy. Oh, y'all meet the robot voice. This is the robot voice, guys. When my daughter comes over, she likes to play on the soundboard and she likes to talk to the robot. I put the headphones on her and just let her go. And she's like, oh, this is the robot voice. But in a more serious note, her birthday's coming up and she's like, Hey daddy, I'm having a party. Are you going to be there? I just nod my head, but in reality, I'm, I wasn't invited. <laughs> I was not invited to her birthday party. So, you know, we going to get through it. I have her for like that, the first half of that day. So we're going to just do something little me and her a little something, something, you know, do something a little, little, little daddy daughter time. Maybe invite my sister over. Cause I'm an uncle now for my JDF people. Yes, that's right. My sister had my nephew and I'm happy. But let's get into the content. Please be respectful. You know, we support the whole family, the whole family. Okay. The whole family, even people we may not agree with. Shout out to anywho. So what does this say? What let, let's let's 
Let's go to my email, guys. What does she say? Because remember, I did that good old poll. I did the poll. Let, you know, for the people who not who people who knew here, right? Let's show, let's show who Shauna is real quick. For those who don't know, let's 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 show who Shauna is. Let me stop that. Let me let me give y'all a representation of who she is. Let me pop that up. And we just gonna share it. And that's Shauna. That is Shauna Carroll who reached out to me with nothing but kind words to say to me. Shauna, oh, thank you. She was one of the more milder <laughs> words, but we appreciate Shauna for her kind words. And if you remember last chat, right? Last chat, what did I do? I I <laughs> I think I may have outdone myself last chat. We talked about parental alienation, guys. And we did a poll. We defined what parental alienation was. We used the conversation between me and her son, Jacob. Shout out to Jacob. You know, my favorite troll. Uh, he's relentless. He, he never gives up. You know, I like that. He keeps going. But um, we used his words, his statements. We defined it. And then we did a poll. And y'all said it was parental alienation. So what I have after we saw her, let's, you know, let's... Let's uh, let's show what she what the what kind of words she said to me, guys. And I appreciate her kind words. I really do because I get so much hate, guys. As you know, I get I get hate mail. <laughs> I never thought I'd be getting hate mail from uh Shauna, but here we are, and this is my life. Uh, let me make it a little bigger for you guys, so you guys can you can feel these words, feel them in your everywhere okay everywhere and i know i you know you know what if tony was here he would say certain things have to be kept private i know i know tony certain things do have to be kept private but shauna she wants some attention so we're gonna give her some attention what does she say good evening sir i really don't appreciate your little poll about jdf being alienated like like this is what i'm talking about guys instead of saying i don't appreciate my son saying all these bad things about me she don't even she don't even look at that she don't look well jacob is her caretaker now guys and we gonna figure out why he's her caretaker and despite trolls coming at me hard um i don't i don't have no animosity towards the trolls i got so much going on in my life so when people troll me i'm just like thanks for thinking about me i'm, I'm living in your head rent free but you know look i mean look at these calls right miss call <laughs> that's one uh Anyone drinking? Anyone drinking tonight? Okay, if you drinking tonight, let's say drink water. Let's say we are gonna drink eight ounces of water for every missed call. Good evening, sir. She sent the message. She called me once. She called me twice. She called me three times. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stop talking ish about me. You are ignorant. You know. You know. Sometimes when people say ignorant, they want to say something else. But anyway, another missed call. Another missed call. Now remember, so how many missed calls we got? One, two, three, four, five. We got five missed calls and two after the whatchamacallit. All right, let's go to the next one. Share this tab. Uh, you are ignorant. There's our two missed calls. What did she say? Out of respect for all people involved, I will say what I have to say. I'm not a camera uh, person per se. <laughs> I mean, she didn't say that. Tony D, I remember he's an effing liar and was one of Jason's minions. Not Tony. Not Mr. You dig, bro. You like to dig. <sighs> Tony, she calling you a liar. Am I digging too far? Am I, am I, if I'm digging too far, let me know. Tony D, I, she called him a liar. Uh-oh. I'm watching your YouTube thing where you're questioning the Black Widow. I may be able to shed some light on things, especially the abuse that he suffered from her. So I guess she's trying to take a shot at uh, Tammy and call her the Black Widow. So keep this in mind, guys. Would you find Shauna Carroll credible? Would she be a credible witness? Do you think she would tell you the truth? Do you think she would tell you the truth if, you know, or her truth? Would she? 
I, I don't know. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Gosh, now she's calling me an idiot. You really an idiot. My children tell me when they have contact with you. And my daughter today questioned me about my interest in breaking my silence. Be smarter. Uh oh. Like, guys, I told you. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I told you, whenever you become an investigator, the first thing, you know, my boss told me is treat every conversation like it's public. OK, there is no such thing as privacy once it comes out of your mouth, even if they say, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm like, OK, you ain't going to say nothing. All right. Well. Sure, sure, you're not going to say nothing, but because I told you, you could, you could say something. And what, what does my guy, what does, oh, Jesus Christ. sorry, sorry about that. That was the wrong one. What does Just for 10 say? Shout out to Just for 10. I live in Fort Bend County. Wish I could do more to help. I'm, I'm not sure as much more you could do. Oh, oh, I almost slipped this. I don't know if it's much to do per se. If I, you know what, Just for 10, for 20, email me, email me. I'm not going to say it like with everyone watching, but email me. All right. What does our guy Dust Production say? I don't think I would just believe what she says. But it will be interesting to what to see what she would say. That's right. Okay, guys. All right. You know, you know, you, you know, you guys are my boss. So he said it'd be interesting to see what she said. And you know, I love these polls. You know, I love a good poll. All right. So let's start a poll. Uh, Shauna interview. And we, you know, we try to keep things as ones and zeros. Do you guys want it? Yes or no? And speaking of interviews, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this time, and we gonna I'm gonna kick I'm gonna kick some game to y'all real quick. So there's the poll now. Shauna's watching, guys. So <laughs> keep in mind, you know she's watching y'all. So y'all better you better you better figure out how you vote. Thank you, Dust Productions. All right, let's leave this up for a minute. She wants to do an interview. That's right, Shauna. She wants to do an interview, but guess what? Shauna is under the control of Jacob. Okay. She suffered uh, an attack and she is unfortunately like half of her body is paralyzed. So, you know, I don't want to joke about that um, at all because it's just not, it's not funny. Um, but she did suffer an attack and she is um, paralyzed, I believe on her left or right side, but don't take my word. Someone said, who is Shauna? Shauna is JDF's first wife, okay? The first wife is Shauna, all right? So that's who she is. But the kids, right? It's the kids. The kids put things out on the internet. Someone said, I may be biased, but why not? Any info is more info. See, the, here's the problem with the Shauna interview, right? Do you think she's going to have anything positive to say about uh, Tammy? Do you think she's going to have anything positive to say about JDF? And what is she going to do when I, when I ask her these two questions? Did you tell your kids that Jason David Frank was not paying child support? And that's a yes or no question. That's one. That's, that's a, that's a hard hitting question. Did you ever call the police on Jason David Frank when he came to pick up the kids? <laughs> that's another hard question. That's another hard hitting question. Okay. Another one. <clears throat> uh, did Jason David Frank uh, give you money after the divorce? Did you, that's another one, right? After the divorce, after the alimony, after the child support, did he give you money? Okay. Another one. Did you ask Jason David Frank for money after the child support went away? Did you? So, Sean, are you watching? These are the questions you could prepare for. Another question. Did you sign over your parental rights to Sky? That's another question. That's another one. That, and I already know the answer to that one. We already know the answer to that one. Why did you sign over your parental rights? You know, these are questions. So you come on this show, we're going to have to, you know, uh, tackle that. Did you alienate your kids? She's going to say no. But we want to know, why do you feel like you didn't alienate your kids when Jacob said, hey, you told us that he didn't pay child support? So that, that look, you don't want to come on this show asking questions. I know I went easy on Tony because I just wanted to, I didn't want to go too hard on him. He was given a little bit of information, but he lied and we're going to get to what he lied about. So shout out to Emmanuel T. What, is, what does Emmanuel T say? 
what's done in the dark will come to the light. Yes, yes, yes. What's done in the dark will come to light, right? And that applies to all parties involved. Thank you, Emmanuel T, for the donation. So things about JDF that was done in the dark will be coming to light. And um, that's just what it's going to be. And I don't think it's going to tarnish his legacy in any uh, capacity at all. It's just going to just make him human because we're all human, okay? And I know some people, I know some people are just telling me like, hey, you know, I shouldn't be digging. I know. You shouldn't be investigating That's, too much. Tony, Tony, I know. I know. I know, guys. I know. I know. But look, look, I'm going to dig. What is going on? I'm going to, look, Tony, I'm going to dig. And we're not going to get to Tony's lies right now. And it's just a little lie, right? But sometimes a little lie can become a big lie, guys. A little lie becomes a big guy. And I did not prepare the goddamn slide. Oh, it's eating me alive. All right, so what do we have here, right? What do we have here? Shout out to, let me, I'm over here jumping back and forth. So this is Sky, okay? I see everyone is loving the, uh, is everyone is loving the, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the sound bites, uh, the the Tony stuff. Like I got to memorize these because I, I I literally put these together. Um, you dig, bro. You like to dig. <laughs> I know I do dig, bro. I literally put these together probably about ten minutes before the show, and in doing so, I forgot to load the clip where he lies. But it's okay because we're gonna find it. <laughs> we're gonna find it. But uh, let's invoke our fair use privileges, guys, because we want to hear about. All right, fair use, experts of copyrighted material may under certain circumstances be quoted verbatim or purposes such as criticism, news reporting, teaching, and research. We definitely doing some research on Shauna, okay, without need for permission for payment to the copyright holder. So who is this? This is a this is a small YouTuber, and, and I hate to say small, but they got 40 subscribers. I'm a small YouTuber, but what happens when you when you just starting, when you just starting out? You may get some good content and you may not really know it's good. Like, look at this. It only has 384 views, 10 likes, and we're not throwing shade, but this is a phenomenal interview, right? Especially for, for us fans, because we want to know about Shauna and we want to know about Shauna from her kid's mouth. Jacob told a story. Now let's hear it from Sky. My mama, um, currently her status right now, she's, she's in a nursing home paralyzed. That's Nursing home paralyzed. She's out the nursing home. Um, she's out the nursing home. Over probably like I, I'm gonna say probably like two years, maybe two years ago. She, she was in an abusive relationship, and uh, her husband uh, basically choked her so bad to the point where she had a blood vessel pop in her neck, and she wasn't getting a, enough blood in her brain. So all right, so you see, Shauna has suffered some abuse, and we don't joke about abuse because we're not we're not here to base the the abuse is not the focal point. The parenting is the focal point because she said, hey, I was a good parent. I didn't alienate them from their father. All right. But what does Sky have to say about that? So she had a stroke which affected the uh, right side of her brain, which paralyzed the left side of her body. So my mother will never be the same again. It's a touching. It's hard for me to talk about it because that's my mom. Look, my mom did the best that she can growing up. You know, we did live in cars. We did sleep in tents. Oh, OK. Did y'all hear that? We did sleep in cars. We did live in tents, and I'm not trying to make fun of her for sleeping in a car or living in a tent, but how are you living in a car or sleeping in a tent when we know JDF was giving you $2,300 a month, okay? And this is back in, uh, what, 2010? Early, you know, so $2,300 would have went a long way, a long way, okay? So you mean to tell me, you paying this great mother twenty three hundred a month, and we got Sky and probably she was the youngest. Depending on what year, Hunter may have been there, living in a tent or sleeping in the car. So either Sky is lying or Sky's probably telling the truth. Oh, and we got welfare. That's right. You got you ha in lieu of the twenty three hundred. You also have welfare. Okay, praying for. For you, Shauna, and peace and comfort doing this stuff. So, yeah, we 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 don't got no beef with Shauna, even though she called me an idiot, even though she called me ignorant. We don't got beef, but let's hear from Sky. She did eventually give me up to the foster system because she was a single mom of four kids and she was tired. 
What the hell? Did we catch that? Did y'all... Look, did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch what she said? Do I need to rewind it? She said she was a single mom with four kids and she was tired. So because she was tired, she gave her up for... Let's go back. Let's go back. Realize the left side of her body. So my mother will never be the same again. It's a touch. And it's hard for me to talk about it because that's my mom. Look, my mom did the best that she can growing up. You know, we did live in cars. We did sleep in tents. She did eventually give me up to the foster system because she was a single mom with four kids and she was tired. I don't blame her for being tired and I don't blame her for, you know, I've watched my mother suffer. I watched my mother go and turn to the bottle and turn to drugs. I watched mm -hmm. my mother pass out, falling down the stairs when I was 12 years old. I had to call the ambulance. The ambulance told me if I didn't call, my mom would have died. I this is traumatic, okay? This is, tra this is trauma, okay? You talking about a 12-year-old kid watching her mom drink and pass out and fall down the stairs. Okay, yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Who's the fourth kid? Not JDF's kid, I'll tell you that. But you know, I don't have no hate or in my heart or anything like that. But let's let's keep it going. I saved my mom's life three times. Mm. And then I was in Alabama oh, on this man. little mini tour doing shows. My mom called me, were, said that they were fighting. She was fighting with her boyfriend. I called the police from Alabama all the way to Riverside, <laughs> California. The police found my mother <laughs> unresponsive. Okay. So Sky's out of town. Mom calls her, hear her fighting. She calls the police, okay? Okay. Now, Bougie Cat is our super detective. He needs to start a channel, but he won't. And he, he I'll, 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 we'll talk about that. All right, we're going to talk about that. Mm -mm. And then I got a phone call back from um, the hospital saying, like, does your mom not speak? And I'm like, man, she's, she's lying. Like, she just doesn't want to snitch on him or tell on him. No, nah, she really, like, flat cold just like had a stroke and just like fell out so it's like she was it, you know i love my mom and like i'm strong i'm the the woman i am today is because of my mother and my grandma i was raised with two strong women mm. and, and my aunt too rest in peace you know to my aunt Shree passed away but i grew up with you know three strong women in my right. life no men but my, you know, my brothers, but they were, you know, we grew up around, around women. All right. So they grew up around women and shout out to, shout out to, uh, the sin Uraka. Thank you. The sin Uraka for the $10 super sticker. I really appreciate you showing support for this content. And now we have her mom. So we heard, we heard sky story. Okay. We heard sky story. Uh, come on, man. We don't got to call. People don't know how to be respectful. Just, just time them out. Let me just time, let me time some people out. Put them in time out. All right, we try to be respectful, everybody. But Bougie Cat said something that was very uh, poignant or whatever. Where are we at? Where are we at, Bougie Cat? Bougie Cat. He said, but I got to find it. Anyway, the fourth kid, Shauna kept. So... With that being in mind, if Shauna said, hey, I want to come over here and do an interview, I'm going to be like, hey, um, why'd you give up uh, Sky and kept your fourth kid? So thank you, Shauna, for your contributions. But now let's get into let's get into a little deeper, guys. This is about to be this is about to be heavy, because remember. Um, JDF was going through a lot. He was going through a lot, and he never really handled uh, people expiring well, all right? And what I want to show you is Casey Hobson, okay? And who is Casey Hobson? Casey Hobson was a beloved son, brother, and friend of Casey touched the hearts and lives of many people, you know, in his short life. Casey really did live the life to the fullest and on his own terms. Casey loved people, okay? Love people. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? In his in his short life, Casey really did laugh to the fullest on his own terms. Casey loved people and loved to help everyone. He knew 
strangers. Casey had many interests and talents. He was an MMA fighter, a wakeboarder, a motocross rider, a skateboarder. He did a lot. He is deeply loved by all and will be missed by many. We love you, Casey. And this is another pin into JDF's life. Okay. This is another pin. And I see Dust, you had a question. We're going to get to it. But this is another pin in JDF's life. All right. And you're like, well, why, why is this important? Why is this important? Because it says he, uh, sorry, it says he expired. We're going to use expired. Um, whoever wrote this is full of BS. Casey did not die from a heart attack, okay? They are saying a heart attack. And this is what happens, right? When people die in a way that may be hard for others to grasp, they'll say he died from a heart attack. But my source, who is remaining silent at this point, who may come later around and do a full interview, said, no, he did not die of a heart attack. And this person, Amanda Witten, Witten wrote, whoever wrote this is full of BS. Casey did not die from a heart attack. He died from a prescription drug toxicity. And she is absolutely correct. He overdosed on Xanax, the same thing that Shayla overdosed on. Okay. And, but let me acknowledge Dust's question. What does he say? Um, she was given a foster care. Why didn't she go into the custody of JDF? That's an excellent question. I could speculate, but one, I'm not sure JDF had parental rights to Sky at the time because the mother uh, went for full custody. So dad just becomes an ATM. And if whatever the mom wanted to do with Sky is whatever the mom wanted to do with Sky, you don't really need his permission per se, because he had no rights. Had no rights. But let's get, let's get back to Casey, okay? Let's get back to Casey. So it seems like a random MMA fighter. And look at this date right here. This date is very important. April 29th, 2011, okay? What happens? Who was Casey? Who was Casey? Uh, Casey, this is JDF's page, right? This is JDF's page. JDF knew Casey. He knew Casey. This is March 8th. He posted this. And what is he going to say? All right. Remember, JDF does not fair use, fair use to JDF in. We gonna just go through it. Oh, the grenade. There's no story behind that, but there's a reason why I got it. I guess now, um, I just liked it. It was a good design. But then I looked at one of the designs that I created for one of my friends, uh, Casey Hobson, who passed away. He was. Uh, you see that he created a design for Casey Hobson. He got it tattooed on him. Okay. So imagine this. You JDF. Remember, I was supposed to go way deeper into that we're JDF when I was doing the case off. But I got too emotional and I just ducked out and I started rambling at the end. So sorry, guys. But you're JDF, the person you're close to at age 22 overdoses on uh, Xanax. Okay. Let's go. Uh, he worked in my first corner and I uh, worked on the first fight, second fight. Real talented, uh, real talented kid. He died like at 22. Um, and, uh, but he had, I, I guess I designed a shirt. With the, his, his name is Casey. The hand grenade hops so now i kind of dedicate that tattoo to him since he's passed away and stuff but i got away before he passed away but i'm saying on his walkout shirts i just realized i had like the hand grenade with wings and i just realized that i mean so i looked at that and i was like wow you know but casey was a really good talented kid man he was good he just uh had like something wrong with his brain i guess brain hemorrhage or something all right so what he's doing right now is covering up for him he does not want to reveal to the world that casey od'd on xanax so People will say, well, JDF's lying. You could you can interpret it as a lie, but you know, some people don't. Like I said, this is this is news that I'm giving you guys that only his close family know that hey, we put heart attack. Some people say head injury, but realistically it was Xanax. Uh, and um real good fighter and um, he, he was a good friend too. He was all tatted up. He also did tattoos, he tattooed himself. But I went to his um, his brother, Justin, now, who um, a real good friend of mine. He lost his brother, and I lost my brother. All right, you hear that? Justin. I'm sorry I'm pausing a lot, but 
is certain things I, I want you guys to pick up on. So I'll, I'll actually rewind it a little bit, but Casey had a brother named Justin. And remember, at this point, JDF lost his brother and Justin lost his brother. Okay? I rewind it. Awesome tattoos. He tattooed himself. But I went to his, uh, his brother, Justin, now, who um, is a real good friend of mine. He lost his brother and I lost my brother, so we're kind of there together for each other. And his family's a great family, his dad and all that stuff. His dad raised him, so Casey was like the little his, his son. You know, it was hard to lose his son because I relate to my mom and dad when I lost my brother. They were like, you know, devastated and all that. So I was devastated when I lost my brother. But when I went to Casey's funeral, it kind of felt like I kind of relived, you know, my brother's funeral and put a lot of things behind me. It kind of made me stronger because at my brother's funeral, I wasn't all there. I mean, it was like, you know, how, how are you supposed to? I mean, me and my brother were really close and all that stuff. Got all right. So look at this, guys. He's still talking about his brother's death. Remember, I believe his brother died in 2001. And this is 10 years later. He's still talking about his brother. And he just relived it when Casey uh, died on overdose. I really couldn't even uh, talk about it back then. But I think that this whole thing was like a healing process. And when I used to talk to Casey about it, I used to say, hey, you know, talk about my brother. Get all choked up. He's like, man, I can help you. I'm thinking, you can't help me, dude. I mean, you know, there's no, no help for this. You know, I need psychological help or something because it's been nine years. And every time I think of it, I'm like, you know, really like that. But uh, he used to tell me he helped me. And then I realized that, you know, um, that he did help me because, you know, he had passed away and he changed my life and changed a lot of people's life and stuff. And I couldn't step foot on a funeral um, place for nine years after my brother passed away. Okay. Like, I... I hope you guys are picking up on what I'm picking up on because these are these small, intricate details. Nine, this is nine years after his brother's death. And he said, hey, I couldn't even go to a funeral place after my brother passed. Like his brother's death weighed. He I would go to say uh, JDF's brother's uh, self-deletion weighed heavy on him. Thank you, Duchess. I see you in the chat. I appreciate you. I appreciate all my mods heavy on him okay in fact the first time i ever, ever stepped foot on a funeral thing was in the stupid cheap movie fall guy i did for it was dumb but the movie and it was a funeral thing and it was devastating on the funeral i was like oh you know and it's funny because in that movie where jake was supposed to die or whatever those were real tears i was thinking of my brother i was devastated people some oh he sucks as an actor you weren't even really crying i was like man i was crying i was messed up two, two months after that film i was like Ugh, you know so i Guys, are y'all picking this up? Two year, two months after his brother passed, or some years after his brother passed, he's in a movie. He's crying, not crying because he's acting. He's crying because he's thinking about his brother. Okay, his brother is so pivotal in his decision. Okay, and we're going to get to why his brother is so pivotal and why JDF did it. Because the news I got, I was like, what the? It just blew me away. I'm going to say it's fake. It was, it was real. It's a stupid movie, yes, but. The emotions were true. The emotions were there. And uh, but um, but really, I guess I couldn't step foot on a funeral at all. But then I was leaving Casey's funeral. Like they asked me to ride my bike behind his coffin. And I was like, man, I didn't feel worthy. I, I, you know, me and Casey were friends, but we weren't this good. I mean, all his family's behind me. So I designed a thousand walkout shirts. His dad bought a thousand walkout shirts. You know, Casey hops the grenade and everybody. Because Casey always wanted a walkout shirt. He was supposed to fight April 9th. Then he died like um, on the 20th, I think it was. So it was just right after his fight, 11 days later. So we always wanted his walkout shirt, and I'd never been able to design the shirt until that day. So we buried him in that shirt, and the G's then tap shirt. So that's like, cool. that's like, you know, really moving when you create something. <clears throat> when you create something and somebody, you know, they say they want to be buried in it. So he's getting choked up. That That's what he's doing. He's getting choked up, okay? So he created it. We, we don't have to see any more of that. I think you guys got what um, I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see that, hey, like his pain from losing his brother, then he, he bonds with Justin and he creates this tribute video for uh, uh, Casey. And we're going to just, we're going we gonna to play it pretty fast, but I want, I want you guys to see that, hey, they were together. I can't play the sound because. It's a it's a copyright sound and shout out to uh Shady FN. We're gonna fair use it. So that's Casey. And this is, I believe they were prepping for a fight or something. Something something to that nature. There they go. Jesus didn't tap. 
Um, I couldn't imagine you training with somebody for so long, like working out with them, getting them better, spending time with them. You're bonding. When you train, I don't know if y'all ever, I forgot we got, I go through, fast forward this, you know, you know how you two feel about that, but they're training and you bond. I don't, if you ever box, I boxed a little bit before. If you ever, if you ever boxed, you bond. The person you sparring with, that's like your brother, okay? That, that is no, no crap. So imagine your brother who you're training with, and I don't know if you ever trained for MMA, but it's intense. It is intense. So now you're starting to see that, hey, a lot of people in JDF's life are gone. All right? So like, it don't get too much closer than that. All right, guys. You, I think you guys get the point. Um, it's sad, right? Because we're not just watching... We're not just watching um, a video per se of two people. We're watching two people in this video are no longer here. And that's why I said, yo, I had to take a break from JDF because it was just getting too dark. It was getting too heavy. And look, this, this gets dark. So, but this is the last dark JDF stream, I promise you. All right, what do we got here? Mr. Monster says, I'm honestly beginning to realize that he was far more depressed than I could ever imagine that he put on such a great, tough, such a tough display for us fans. You are exactly right. Because after Casey took his life or overdosed on April 29th, 2011, JDF bonded with Casey's brother. And thank you, Mr. Monster. Yes, deaf. It's contagious. He bonded with Justin. And Justin was not dealing with the loss of his brother too good. So what did Justin do? Let's 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 see this tab right here, right? So remember, 2011. This is the memorial for Justin Hobson. He's gone. Justin Hobson, beloved son, brother, grand godson, grandson, first friend, born January 30th, 1986, in Houston, Texas, to Michael R. Hobson and Tony Lee. Uh, Justin went to be with the Lord on April 29th, 2013. With, you know, his loving family by his side. Okay, that with his loving family by his side is a little bit of a stretch, okay? Because remember, April 29th, he's gone. But what did his brother do? I'll, I'll go back. I'll show you. April 29th, right here, right here. That's the day he's gone, okay? And the family, they did, they, they left out, they buried uh, the lead, basically. He didn't just you know, die peacefully, but with his family side, he put a bullet through his head and was in a coma. Okay. And do you know who was at that hospital when he was in a coma? JDF. So now you got uh, JDF who lost his sparring partner. See, I'm, it, 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 it just hits you. It just, it just hits you. He lost his sparring partner to an OD. Then he bonded with the brother, and then his brother just said, I don't want to be here no more, tried to put a bullet through his head, was unsuccessful, he was in a coma, then he expired. Now, this is my source giving me this information, and you're like, I, I, I had no idea of this. Only person I knew was, um, was Eric, and we gonna, I'm going to tell you exactly how Eric uh, self-transitioned at the end of this and how close they were. So I couldn't imagine this, right? Look, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be honest with you guys for a minute. Cause you know, I, I give you my life. I give you my life. I, I, I know I joke about, I know I joke about like, you know, me, well, I'm not joking. I am getting divorced. Um, but I try to do that to kind of kill it, to kill the, whatchamacallit. All right. So what does dust production say before I give you my life? Uh, the amount of self-deletion around JDF is crazy. Yes. See, Dust has been here from the beginning. He's starting to put the pieces together, right? Self-deletion is contagious. Self-deletion is contagious. I'm not lying. Self-deletion is contagious. And I'm happy that I've only experienced self-deletion once in my immediate family, which is the loss of my cousin. And, you know, you had people saying... Um, you know, you, you know, people fail JDF. They say, hey, you failed JDF. 
he was, he was, you know, he was going through some stuff and you, you didn't stop him. And I was like, look, my cousin, she self transitioned while her parents were in the next room and they asked her, did she want to watch a movie? She said, no, then put a bullet through her chest. And if he was to say, Hey, her parents failed her. I'm like, well, how, how you, you just never know. But back, bring it back to JDF brother gone. He bought, look, when you lose a brother, he gravitor, gravitated towards Casey. So the love that he had for his brother, he put into Casey. Um, now Casey is gone. The love that he had for Casey, he puts into Justin. Okay? Justin is gone. So now who does he put the love into? He don't, who? Who? His brother's gone. You might as well say he lost three brothers. He didn't just lose Eric. He lost three brothers. What does he do? We 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 can read more of this. Um, it, it it's it's morbid, but um, we we'll, we'll we'll get to all of it. Um, Just was a very talented and gifted young man with many interests. Life he enjoyed weightlifting, wakeboarding. He just like his brother. MMA. Justin had an intense passion for life and everything he did came to natural to him. It was because he said that. Oh, sorry, I ain't even showing y'all. I'm sorry. Um, I like to show y'all what I'm reading just because so y'all can actually follow along or maybe you might want to read ahead. All right, let me get that out of there. Get this down. Um, anywho, uh, where were we at? Uh, Justin had a passion for life. Words cannot begin to describe his true passion. Uh, in life was his family. He had a family. So you got a guy with a family, right? This is how depression works. You don't care about your family. And say that's why people say it's selfish or whatever, because you like, dude, I don't care about my family. I just don't want to be here anymore. And with that being said, let me put a banner up because um, I don't want guys who think they can't talk. Talk. There is a line down there. You can always email me. People have before. And I don't I actually hear your stories out. So. um. He had a family and friends who truly adored him. Justin will be deeply missed, who all knew him, fond memories of him with that big smile on his face. We always treasured and shared. Like, I, this is sad to read. Justin is preceded by his death, in death by his brother, Casey Hobson, and grandfather, um, who, he, who he survived by. His loving father. So you have another father who has to bury a son, Mike Hobson. His dear mother, Yancey. His beloved sister, uh, Jennifer Yancey, his dear grandparents, Rob, and his great great grandmother. So, all these people lost two sons, and JDF lost in total three brothers. And of course, JDF, this is dated. Uh, let me show you. What is this? Could you imagine? This is dated April 30th, 2013, one day after he passed. He puts a, a tribute video out and RIP Justin, we love you. Now you and now you and Casey are together. Now you and Casey are together. God bless you. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? Do you see what's happening? Do y'all understand the gravity of it? Please, please say y'all do. Shout out to shout out to just just him for 20. What does he say? Uh, we love you, JDF, forever in our hearts, and for sure. For sure, forever in our hearts. Um, even when I even when I scream about the juicers, I still keep the Green Ranger up. And his poem, that poem is fire. But um, I see we got 184,000 people in here and not enough likes. So can we get the likes up? Can we get the likes up? All right, let's play the tribute. I couldn't imagine creating two tributes for two brothers in two years and who took their lives on the same day. And I can't play the sound because of the copyright so this is oh what's the settings playback speed uh, speed that up all right so this is them there you go sparring right here that's the that's the older brother that's not jdf but hey now you're with your brother Think about that, right? Now you're with your brother. That doesn't seem like something negative. 
to JDF. But look at this. He put this together, Justin and Michael Hobson, January 30th to April 29th. Casey and Justin together forever. This is this is devastating. All right. Uh, we all we got the Facebook post. You, you know, this was the Facebook post in love or memory of my friend Justin Hobson. And Casey Hobson died on the same day two years ago. They will forever, they will never be forgotten. So he's never forgotten about Jay, his, his two brothers, not blood, but basically taking their one, the older one taking their life to be with the younger one. Do you see how deep this is? And this guy had to live with this for years and he got the tattoo of the hand grenade. You think he didn't get a tattoo for the other brother? You think he didn't have a tattoo for Eric? So he is keeping all these scars on him with him in his day-to-day -day life. Day-to-day -day life. All right. Anyway, let's do a little commercial so you guys can get the likes up. And we're going to bring out Patty for the commercial. So can everyone in here like the stream? And then we'll, we'll get to where... Uh, where Tony lied. I woke up on Friday morning at 4 a.m. to a message that one of my friends back home had killed himself. This was uh, five hours before me weigh-in. So, Ricky, lad, that's for you. But there's a stigma in this world that men can't talk. Listen, if you're a man and you've got weight on your shoulders, and you think the only way you can solve this by killing yourself? Please speak to someone. Speak to anyone. People would rather, I know I'd rather me make cry on my shoulder than go to his funeral next week. So please, let's get rid of this stigma and men start talking. All right, so yeah, men start talking. All right, let's go to something a little lighter. Um, something a little different we about to start to get into um there's some things i want you to pay attention to uh we're going to talk about it's not necessarily mama frank but she's part of it but it's the first couple of minutes of it so now we know he lost three brothers total got tattoos to remember him by he's carrying that weight with him he lost his mother he lost his daughter. You might as well just say Shayla's his daughter. Don't I, I know people say, oh, it's his stepdaughter. He raised her. It's his daughter. And he's, he's alienated from his other kids, which you guys confirmed. Um, it's, look, I, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with it. I, 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 I'm not lying. I could not deal with this. So uh, let's end this poll. 152 poll, poll people said they want a Shauna interview. I don't know. I don't know if she's going to give me one, but uh, let's get into. Um, you know, what? let's wait. I'm sorry, guys. We're going to wait. So we're going to talk about what this friend, this this person who would like to remain anonymous said to me. And um, we talked a lot. I talked to this person for about an hour and a half. And that's how I got the uh, Justin in. Casey Hobson's story out. But this person knew JDF intimately. In fact, he knows, oh, I just said it's so a he. He knows everybody. Everybody, okay? And this person is very credible. Very credible. And I just wrote some things down. Um, and he's known JDF for a, a number of years. And what did he say about JDF? He said, you know, JDF was a great guy, a hustler, always made money. Always will put people on. He always will put people on. And I have to bring up this freaking video of Tony. You, you guys remember Tony, right? Uh, YouTube. We got to bring up Tony. We got to go through the interview. And we're going to go through it pretty quick because there's something that he said where he slipped up. And I, I should have prepped. I should have prepped. I'm sorry. I'll get you back on the next one. But... Let's go to the videos and let's find the Tony video. Da, 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 da. Where is it at? Where is it at? All right, Tony. All right, uh, shutter stab. 
All right, so we're going to watch the Tony interview. We're going to watch it in Shipbug Mode. Tony, bro, why is my name being dragged through all this? What's going on? Look, if you want to clear some things up, she made some allegations that you Hold told on, her about voice. a will. All right. <laughs> I know, right? Two voices. Hold on. One you have to mute the YouTube stream. <laughs> we're not going to listen to all of this. Okay. And you being his friend, did you know he was battling with depression? But all these moments shouldn't be divulged bro this is private stuff all right guys we go i'm i'm this is private stuff that should stay between us this is how i'll actually listen to I mean, so what upsets me okay. is that everybody wants to talk act like they know but they don't know yeah you you would know because you were his best friend bro i'm, I'm telling you like we, we, we don't we don't divulge information because in what you should be just overextending between people who are forced to but people like people random people that don't even know what's going on bro oh, right. i don't even know how long this stuff that you guys are talking about is animosity. Yo, he, was, he was coming in hot, yo. Okay. He was coming you know what hot. I mean? Like, like it, it upsets all of us. Because I, I understand. Okay, what, okay, so my, my point to you is this. Certain times, out with, and then you get back into the fold. Okay? Correct. So example, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I know the whole, the whole thing. So but, over the top. Oh, that's fine, man. You know, but it's because he would have wanted it that way. I, me being here is I'm here to say maybe certain people have to relax and understand that. What you're saying, right? And I don't know if you watch my stream, I say. What I'm saying to you is like, if you want to get deep into it, some anyone that you brought it up, the interaction that we had, see, that's the thing, right? And maybe Tony could vouch and say, look, yeah, we had that conversation. Conversation. Did he see that? It was fine. Okay. Hold on. I think right. right here. And how would you describe? Right. That's what pisses me off because a bunch of people are here talking about like they know all this stuff, but they don't know everything. Of course, back in the day, of course. All right. There we go. There we go. How do you put it? Like all the. All right. All right. I found it. All right. I found it. So we know he lied about the whole. Um, the, uh, he didn't tell Tammy that Sky caught her a bish. All right. We know he lied about that. I saw proof and I have it. You know, I know, I know what he would say. Like you dig bro. You'd like to dig. I know Tony, I, I'm going to keep digging cause you keep giving me content and, uh, maybe, maybe Tony will come back on the live stream guys. You think he'll come back? <laughs> you think he'll come back? Nope. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get to where he lied. And you're going to catch the lie, because I caught him out on the lie. And I just was like, yo, wait, what? Well, the things about my friend, bro. All right. We get what it. things? Everything. This is private information. Like, Prior to his demise, you never observed him. Why right. would you have to divulge all this information? People want to know what's going on in his life. I understand. Did, but, was, but, did but, he but, ever drink around you? Of course. Back in the day, of course. All right. Did you, did you see that? Did you see what he said? I said, hey, did he ever drink around you? Back in the day of, well, he said, he, he said, he hit us with this. He hit us with this off the rip. Of course. But he was like, well, back in the day, guys, yeah, back in the day, he used to uh, drink or whatever. And I'm like, Tony, all right, we're going to keep playing it, right? So prior to his demise, you never observed him drinking any alcohol? Bro, we used to party so much. It's not even funny. Back in the day. Yeah. So is that. But. But he was sober for so long. That's the one thing. So you never saw him engage in alcohol? After 10 years, no. All right. There is the lie, guys. There is the lie. That's another lie. And I corroborated this lie with two people, two people, two different sources who was like, look, they hit me up. It was like, yo, Tony's lying. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, he's lying about that. And I was like, well, if he's lying, when, where did he drink at? They told me where he was drinking at. And look, that's right. Hey, Muskrats is a, hey, Muskrats is in the building. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, Muskrats is in, she's saying he's trying to protect them. And she said some other stuff. But yes, I do think, um, I do think in my heart of hearts that Tony was trying to protect them. Right. And what happens when you try to protect people you try to protect their image and you don't want to make them out to be human because I did show you that, uh, whatchamacallit, JDF, JDF said this for all the new people who just, who just tuning in, um, JDF said that he hadn't been drinking and depression is, a, depression is all time high right now. And no one understands that. I gotta, I gotta, I've been doing poetry. Yeah. Poetry. It's a hard thing to, 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 you know, come clean and honest with yourself. You know, I haven't drank in 10 years. People that know me back in the days, crazy. All right, so JDF sadly was not being honest right there.
and what he meant by not drinking and what Tony meant and what the, the, the two people I corroborated this with, um, they said, what, what would happen with JDF is he'll have bouts of sobriety and bouts of sobriety, which means he would stop drinking for extended periods of time, not necessarily 10 years cold turkey. And then they gave me dates where they was like, hey, yes, he drunk. OK, so Tony lied right there. And also, uh, what did this person tell me that in the span that they were interacting with JDF, they, too, have saved his life plenty of times from JDF trying to uh, self transition. And, you know, they said, well, maybe it was for attention, but there are some other more serious times where it was not for an attention. It was a serious attempt that JDF made on his own personal um life and i wish i could have got the dates out of this person i really should have put together the dates because we know around october it gets a little hairy for him because you know he lost his mom he lost his brother uh he lost shayla he lost his other two brothers in april it gets hairy for him even though it's his birthday so uh they said um one time and you could take you could take this with a grain of salt you could say you know henry is full of it um he was, they found him in his karate parking lot with some whiskey and a pistol. And they talked him out of doing things to himself. Other times it was pills. They carried him out and put him on the couch and let him cool off. Okay. And they also said, I'm like, well, how close were these people that you're talking about? And not just these people were in his life. Like, like I said, they may at some point come and uh do an interview that that's what they're thinking about because that what happens when you have these sources you build a relationship they give you a lot of information and they say you can release this 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 and this and i say okay cool i release this this and this i i follow what they say to the t and they told me yes the the pills the pistol they saved his life and he's also on um he was like he also kept pills with him now, I didn't ask what the pills were because they don't know what the pills were. But you know if someone keeps pills with them. I'm not saying like trying to insinuate what that means, but I'm about to show you guys something because you like proof. You are, you are the, the truth seekers. And yes, some people are saying, did Tony lie? The factual answer is yes, he lied, but it wasn't like he wasn't lying for no reason. He wanted to protect the image of JDF. And I'm not here to tear JDF down at all. I'm, if anything, I'm showing you guys the human side of Jason David Frank, where most people just know him as Tommy Oliver. Like, you guys know his birthday. You've seen his death certificate. You've seen his divorce. You've seen everything you want, okay? So let's get into JDF. And shout out to Tony. You know, look, I got no beef with Tony. Y'all, hey, put some T's in the chat for Tony, all right? You know, look, put some T's, you know? You dig, bro. You like to dig. I know, Tony. I like to dig. I know, I know. You shouldn't be investigating too much. This is what happens when you investigate too much, guys. <laughs> this is what happens. Like, you you, you think I'm going to get trolled? Of course. You think I'm going to get some hate mail? Of course. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm going to get to the bottom of it? Of course. All right, Tony, at least you got some confidence in me. Um, I know people think you're a clown, but he, he actually a good guy because the person spoke to his character. They said, Tony is a good guy. And this person would look out for anybody, even me. He, even if Tony like got some beef with me, he would look out for me. And he also told me why Tony and JDF fell out. We ain't going to touch on that. They wasn't always best friends. So anywho. All right, guys, we are all JDF. We are all JDF now, right? Let's put on our JDF shoes and get into some things that I think I laid the foundation for you guys. So like the stream, let's get into JDF because um, I'm going to put the pieces. I'm going to put the pieces together for you guys. So crystal clear. That's going to be no doubt what happened or why it happened. And while I got you guys here. You have to mark your calendars. Okay, so uh, let me go pull up a calendar app before we get into it. Uh, calendar for uh, calendar 2023, because I'm going to give you some dates that I'm going to be streaming. 
specifically JDF content. And we gonna we gonna put this. What's today's date? I need February. Um, I'm gonna be streaming February twenty third. All right, here we go. So let's share the screen. Let's put this up for you guys to see. All right. So February 2023, what's today? Today is the 27th. Today is the 27th. So you're going to get a JDF stream on Wednesday the 1st. Oh, what, 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 the, what, what happened? Wednesday the 1st. Wednesday the 1st, this may be an interview. Um, let's see. Let's do another poll, guys. I see y'all, y'all beefing about Tony. Leave Tony alone. He okay. Um, <laughs> leave Tony alone. He all right, guys. He he's a cool guy. He just, you know, he was he was definitely on something that night. Um, do you? So, uh, what's her? Francis. She may come back for an interview. Um, do you want it? We'll add three options. Do you want it live? Oh. Francis interview. I thought she did okay. Francis interview again. A uh, lot. Do you want a live interview? Pre-recorded like last time with no skips because we don't do skips. Or no, thank you. And I'll let you guys uh, decide because if it's no, thank you, we can start the Tammy timeline on Wednesday. All right, so. For my JDF people, uh, you guys are my boss, as I've always communicated. Indicate what you want. Do you want a live interview, pre-recorded interview, or no thank you? Okay. And Muskrat, look at her. Look at Muskrat. That's our, another future lawyer. Um, she said, I want what Francis is comfortable with. How sweet. How sweet. Can we do both? I, both? I don't know. I think I don't know if Francis got much of Francis got much in the left because she's watching right now. She's probably just not commenting. Uh, please, no all caps, Blake. No all caps, Blake. All right, so let's get back to the calendar. So Wednesday, you're going to get a JDF either interview with Francis or we'll start the Tammy timeline. Then Monday, the six. These are all going to be at 8 p.m. because I know you guys like the 8 p.m. We love 8 p.m. The six o'clock. And then you're going to get one on Friday because we're going to break the, the Tammy timeline down into three parts. I have leading up to the divorce and the divorce. I have um, leading up to his last days. Uh, the reconciliation period. I received some evidence that it is true. They were reconciling. And we're going to deal with his last day, the communications that he sent out his last day. What happened? Where it happened? And the funeral. Because, you know, it was a lot of hoopla about the funeral. You know, who was able to speak, who wasn't, who was being nice, who was not. And basically everything after his demise. So it looks like, let's see, uh, like the stream and uh, vote. Please vote, guys. We got 189 people in here and 65% uh, said uh, live interview. 16 said pre-recorded. 18% said no, thank you. So please vote. Um, and so we got the, the first, the sixth, the 10th, and I believe... Wednesday the 15th and if all things go good if all things go well potentially a Tammy interview on the 20th potentially I'm not sure okay I'm not sure she's thinking about it she she wants she seems like she want to talk but you know me you guys know me um we don't make no accommodations for anybody and what that mean by accommodations if she wants to do an interview it's going to be no cuts. It's going to be straight through. It's going to be one shot. But I do have like three gigabytes of information of proof about, you know, what happened leading up to the divorce, what happened during the reconciliation, what happened during the uh, his last moments, his last days. Where was everyone at? How did everyone find out? I have all of that. So 
shout out to Dust Productions. Everybody subscribe to Henry's channel. You ain't getting this anywhere else. And he is right. There is no, there is no one digging into JD yet. There is no one digging. Dig, bro. You like to dig. There is no one digging into JDF. You know, people said, you know, I should keep it private. I was like, certain things have to be kept private. Nope. Anyway, we ain't keeping nothing private. And I think, I think Tammy's gonna just unload the clip on everything and just be transparent. Well, if you, and you know, I'm hitting her with the hard questions. There will be no softballs. So if you lied to Tammy or if you lied on Tammy, maybe, you know, you might want to tread lightly, especially if she do an interview and provide proof that you lied. So anyway, let's keep it going, guys. Um, that's that Tony soundboard. Though. <laughs> I know, right? I bet. You know what? You know what Tony thinking right now? I probably could read his mind. He probably thinking this. You shouldn't be investigating too much. <laughs> Oh, but oh, Bougie Cat said, "What about uh, his Skype student?" Ugh. Look, Bougie Cat, right? Bougie Cat needs to have his own channel. He is so great, and we talk. I think we talked about the Skype student privately. I'm not going to introduce it right now. We back on our JDF stuff. So, all right, guys, everyone is JDF. Like the stream. We about to go into it. Remember the ambient. So think about ambient while we watch this. While we go, while we go through being JDF. All right, uh, let me make sure I got the dates correct. All right, so we're going to start with Mama Frank. Uh, we're going to start right here. We're not going to watch the whole video, guys. We're not going to watch the whole video. We're just going to watch the parts that's uh, relevant to us, okay? We're just going to watch the parts that's relevant to us because that's all we focus on. All right. Look at this. <laughs> everyone as you can see i'm super tired i have whoa uh, oh is my computer freezing oh gosh my computer freezing guys bear with me it, it jumps to wi-fi sometimes all right let's let's rewind this it, it's it's give me a second Come on, get back on. All right. We're still on Wi-Fi, which I have no idea why it just jumps to Wi-Fi, even though I'm, I'm hardwired in. But he just said, hey, I have not slept. Okay? I have not slept. That's what happens when it freezes. All right, everyone. As you can see, I am super tired. I haven't slept for about four days. All right. Super tired, has not slept for four days. This was uh five years ago okay super tired have not slept in four days it's my speculation if you ain't slept in four days you probably need something to go to sleep okay you probably need something that helps you go to sleep my dad wanted to um move the bike from here to texas so that's what we're gonna do so four o'clock in the morning super cold outside load the bike we go to the bike early this morning and all right he look at his face jesus man my internet's jumping back and forth but look at his face it's a little red look at the eyes they are a little teary-eyed and we about to find out why they're teary-eyed uh fell back to sleep and uh yeah it's about to about to finally hit the road that chopper back that my dad gave me thank you pops so what I like about all right. Did you see the quick flash? This is his brother. Okay, his ADD problem cuffed him a lot too. That's the thing. Okay, maybe. But we're about to go back to his brother's picture. Is it this the first picture? This is his brother Eric Frank. And what? Just listen to what he's about to say about Eric Frank, guys. Sorry for stopping it. You know I got to do it for fair use. Fair use to JDFFN. And I always wanted of my brother that said, Harry Frank, even true. It means a lot. And all you zeal collectors, this is one of a kind. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, this one's mine because I always wanted my brother's autograph. No lie. I always wanted my brother's autograph. So here it is. Thanks, Eric. All right. So. 
we saw the autograph. All right. Now, look, this video is actually interesting, right? Because if you want to watch it, like you see this, this is he's gone. There's the father in law and there is Tammy. If you want to like get to see Tammy's character, I would say watch this video. Um, and the algorithm put this on my pat my my feet and I watched it and I'm like, OK, I see he's talking about his brother and I see he's talking about not sleeping. All right. Let's get to his brother. All right. Because I don't think most people know this about his brother. But we're going to share this little article that was written in 2020. Um, and this is an exclusive, okay? So it's written in 2020. Eric Frank was originally going to be the Gold Zeo Ranger. This is exclusive. Um, it's from 2020. I don't think anyone has this, okay? I don't think they do. What does it say? Before we get into it, let's acknowledge... Let's acknowledge our contributor. Uh, Just Tim for 20 says, I met Mr. JDF once and made me a $1 million deposited into my emotional bank account. He went above and beyond, was truly blessed and thankful to meet him. May God bless him and his fam up on his second coming. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Justin for 20. You got to email me, man. I want Want to hear your JDF story? In fact, I'm gonna drop the link at the end. And if you want to come up and share your JDF story, you are first in line. Thank you for your donation. Um, just 10 for 20. All right, back to the article. Uh, uh, many don't know this. Uh, I can't, I can make it. Let's see if I can make it bigger. But sometimes, you know, these ads just get bigger, not the content itself. You see, you see how the ads just kind of stay the same size. All right, but anyway, many don't know this, but Jason David Frank's brother, Eric Frank, got his start on Power Rangers from behind the camera. A fan remember Eric as Tommy's long lost brother, Danny Trueheart. Y'all remember Danny Trueheart? I remember Danny Trueheart. During the Power Rangers Zeo, the seeds for Day's, uh, David's character actually took place in Mighty Morphin Alien Ranger when Tommy went on his Zeo quest and was given half of an arrowhead by his spirit guy. You guys remember that? Where are my true power fans? Law, you in here? You probably remember that. Um, blah, 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 blah. Then, this would later pay off in Power Ranger Zeo when his real-life brother, Eric Frank, got a chance to join his brother, Jason, on the show. So how did, how did Eric Frank start in the show, right? This is him. They look like twins. There you go. That's Eric Frank. Remember, this is back in the day where we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have iPhones during this time. Eric worked as a grip behind Dennis Bishop, who at the time worked on the show as a gaffer. His brother was the one that landed him the job. So J JDF got his brother the job on the set of Power Rangers. Look at him. When you get on, you're supposed to put your family on. That's just how it works. I don't care if people are like, oh, it's nepotism. So? So I'm going to put my brother on before I put anyone on. If I, if I got a job, I'm going to put my sister on before I put anyone on. Because, you know, I'm a family. You know, uh, the thing about family is, what is it? Uh, the boat that, that rises all ships or something. So I, I, can't, I can't remember the saying, but, you know, you're supposed to bring everyone up with you. And that's what I try to do. I try to bring y'all up with me. Maybe y'all will become investigators one day. Maybe y'all want to uh, retrain your mind to see things a little differently. All right, so and da, 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 his brother was the one who landed him a job. Here's what Jason David Frank had to say. See, my brother had see my brother worked on set. Did you see that picture of him working behind set with his grip tape and all that? I got him a job working behind the scene. He worked with Dennis Bishop. He was a grip, and I got him a job there behind the scene. So he's acknowledging, like, hey, I put my brother on. This is how it's supposed to be. All right, now we get some script. This is this is. I don't think anyone's covered this. this so this might be um, lore to all the, the true Power Rangers. What does it say? Tommy. This is Tommy's line. I wish I had like a code person. Like letting the Falcon come to me. David. Yes, you have proven yourself worthy. Tommy. Who are you? Uh, David. Uh, you have the arrowhead. Tommy takes out his half of the arrowhead. David produces his half of the arrowhead. David. When I was little, a wise man gave this to me. Uh-oh. This is some storyline. This is like, this is, this is actually Power Ranger script. 
The same thing happened to me. He said, when I found the other half, I would complete my quest. Oh, he told me that too. What? They bring the two halves together of the arrowhead. Closer together, they begin to, to glow. Tommy, who are you? David, my name is David Trueheart. I am your brother. Tommy reacts amazed. Hold on, sorry guys. This Tommy reacts amazed. The two halves of the arrowhead glow and seal themselves together in one arrowhead. The title reads, To Be Continued, Freeze Frame. And there goes Eric. Um, Eric will pay his dues behind the camera, but ultimately the lead to Douglas Sloan, staking notice to Frank's brother. During those days, Douglas was an acting coach for the actors, as well as supervising producer and writing Power Ranger Zio. Douglas wanted to give Frank's, Eric Frank a shot. He was the actor, recollect. So, like, this is... I don't even think people in the family man knew this, unless you was like really close. So Doug was like, man, you know what will be great? And I was like, yeah, I could bring my brother. He said, it'd be perfect. Let, let's get him in here. Let's do some episodes and we'll see what happens. So look at this. He is putting on his brother, guys. You cannot say that JDF did not love his brother. He put on his brother like, hey, my brother, I know I got him a job as the grip tape, but wouldn't it be even better if my brother in real life was my brother on scene? And people were like, look, now look, to be fair, the acting back in the day was not like, you wasn't getting an a, a Oscar per se. And I think we all know they wasn't getting an Oscar. But at the same time, with that being in mind, like, hey, I got an opportunity. I got him on the scene. Now I can get him in the whatchamacallit. All right. Shout out to... That's Winter Captain 88. Okay. Hey, Winter, what does she say? What does she say? Um, Jason was amazing. Depression is super real. I lost a lot of people close to me and including my father. Oh, sorry to hear about your father. I met Jason many times and he made my life special. That's right, man. JDF was always trying to make his other, the people. He didn't say, had, say he had fans. He had family and everyone was his family who's like, if you wanted to make better and my internet is just jumpy jumpy but let's put some green 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 hearts in the chat yo green hearts and thank you winters captain 88 <clears throat> let's get through this article so david trueheart was going to be the gold ranger did anyone know that did anyone know that david trueheart was going to be the green ranger i didn't know that and I'm, I'm literally finding out that at this age. I'm literally finding out at this age. So after David Trueheart debuted, Sloan wanted the character to do more and push for a larger role for Eric Frank during the, the time that the Power Rangers deal used a lot of red herrings for the Go Ranger, really building up to some mystery for the character. Okay, so this is what they do, guys. This is what they do. When a uh, show has a new character, they don't want to just... They don't just want to just drop the lead or whatever. Look at Eric. Eric said he did not even know about this. That's a bombshell. Yeah, this is a bomb. Look, I just drop bombs on you guys. Truth bombs, information bombs. That's all I do is just drop bombs on you. Now you now when y'all when the Power Rangers get together, you could bring you could bring this out and be like, hey, you know, uh, Eric was supposed to be the Go Ranger, and it would have been epic too. It would have been epic. Um, after David Trueheart debuted, Sloan wanted the character to do more and push for a larger role for Eric Frank. During the time, the Power Rangers used a lot of red herrings for the Go Rangers. So a red herring is just like, we're going to put random people in it. Um, kind of like what they did with um, The Walking Dead, where uh, Negan just basically packed out everybody so no one would know. Okay? Um, really building up the mystery of the character. Famously, Brad Hawkins, fresh off VR Troopers, which nobody watched voiced the character and had many even speculating that his character, Ryan Steele, was meant to be the Goat Ranger. Uh, Billy used, Billy was also used as misdirection for the Goat Ranger. And now this is the picture of, uh, picture of Eric that you see on the thumbnail. Like, it's the eyes. It's like, it's from here up, right? If you just cover up the mouth, that's JDF. Um, from what Jason recalls, the David Trueheart character's culmination uh, was set to lead him actually to become the Gold Ranger, but 
only under one circumstance. Here's what Frank had to say on the matter. I mean, it was originally, hey, let's get your brother to see how he does. It was leading up to the Gold Ranger. And he noticed that, I mean, you would see the stories all of a sudden. Why, uh, why, why was Brad Hawkins? Brad Hawkins was the voice. And the next thing you know, they got Austin St. John to do it. I think it was more that Austin didn't take the role. It was, whoa, 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 whoa. I think it was more that Austin didn't take the role. It was more. Let's put him here and see what happens if Austin turns down the row. I think that was more of the case. So basically they're saying, hey, if Austin turns it down, um, whatchamacallit, and yeah, save and say a GTFO. Austin, Austin St. John would go and become the Gold Ranger, and he did a great job, but it's fascinating to think about what it would have been like if David Trueheart would have became the Gold Ranger. When Rocky left in, tur in Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, would David have become the Blue Ranger? Would Tommy have passed the torch to his brother instead of TJ in Power Rangers Turbo? There are so many what ifs that are interesting ideas. So that's the end of that article. But now we're going to go to something else, guys. So you see, like, look, I showed you that article so you guys could see the love he had for his brother. That's all it was for. Hey, he had so much love for his brother. He wanted him around. Hey, I just got this job at Power Rangers. Hey, why don't you come on set? Hey, you're doing a great job on set. Hey, why don't you try to get into acting? You could be my brother. You're my brother in real life. It, it, it ain't acting if we really brothers. Now, this was posted. This video I'm about to show you was posted September 2nd, 2013. Okay? September 2nd, 2013. Remember, JDF was on Ambien. Ambien was like very crucial that night. And we, we noticed, um, for the people new here, uh, like the stream, but we noticed that Ambien, let's give a little recap. When you're on Ambien, if I was to take Ambien, if I was to take too much, I would think about self-deletion. Now, look, you know, ain't a self-deletion bone in my body, but I showed you a case study where a young man was on Ambien um, and he started having self-deletion talks. Um, I showed you the case where if you're on Ambien and you already have self-deletion thoughts, it intensifies it. I showed you when you're on Ambien combined with alcohol, you could potentially OD or end up in a coma, okay? So I showed you guys how dangerous Ambien was. I also showed you when you take Ambien, you black out and you may take more Ambien like the young man did, or you may get what they call the Ambien munchies. And I believe one of you guys uh, said it early on in the chat that you did get the ambient munchies. But let's hear what he has to say. Fair use to Jay. Look, message to Tammy, to the whole family. You need to do a documentary on JDF. A whole documentary. Even maybe get Shauna involved. Get the other kids involved. Get everyone involved. Get their take on it. Because I think it would be great. Just because I'm covering his life. I'm like, it's so fascinating. Like everything. But it's also really sad. So you're going to have to deal with that. All right, let's go, guys. We almost done. We almost through. We almost through this two-hour stream, this two-hour monologue. Shout out to y'all for being with me. The seekers of truth and looking at all these clues I didn't um, gather for you to paint a picture that JDF was human. All right, and here we go. Day number two. Sorry. Hello, team. Jason David Frank here. What? And we're at Dragon Con day number two. Um, a lot of people ask me, uh, this is just my thoughts and my feelings of the day. A lot of people ask me why I do conventions and uh, what am I fighting next? Uh, I, first of all, I love fighting. Yo, he loved fighting and he went 4-0 in amateur MMA. He probably should have kept fighting. But, you know, when you're a fighter, you work off of the, their schedule and not necessarily on your own. And you have to train a lot. So even when you're not working, you're training. Being a fire versus being a, a character at Comic-Con, way easier life. If I'm him, I'm like, uh, get punched in the face and make more money and train every day or just motivate people. Someone say he should have, but. Okay. Um, okay. But I love you guys as well. And it's very hard to, I need eight weeks to fight, which means that I have to block everything away for eight weeks. Because if I do something, I commit to it 100%. All right. Did you guys hear that? This is what I'm talking about. If you become a fighter, you can't do nothing for eight weeks, but just fight and practice fight to get ready for the fight. So this is like, look, man, I can't, I can't be a fighter. I, I got to do these comic cons. I have a lot of conventions I committed to. 
And the more I see you guys and the more I read, the more hooked I get. I have a few things I'm working on this year, um, which is going to be like film later on uh, towards the end of the year, which is more of an independent film. Um, but a lot of people ask me why I do conventions and what motivates me. I'll be honest, you guys motivate me. I mean, um, it's when I get up in the morning and last night I had a bad night sleeping. Hang on, Frank. You do get addicted. I do get addicted to streaming, guys. I get addicted to interacting with y'all, sharing my life. Hopefully, I have a positive impact on your life. Um. Anyway, I do. Uh, let's. We got a super chat. What does it say? Uh, let's get to it. From Crimson Hawk. I'm actually going to be on. I think the station he works for on Thursday. Tony was wrong. For uh, JDF was not private. He was secretive. What a man is all over social media, selecting things to share and things to say. That's a type of abuse I would expose when I was rich. I, I don't. Hold on. Let's see it. Tony was wrong. JDF was not private. He was secretive. That man is all over social media, selecting things to share and things to say. So he's basically saying JDF wasn't that private. And to Crimson Hawk's credit, I did hear stories from people at Comic-Con telling me Jason told him personal stuff. And I actually went back and cross reference if JDF was at a Comic-Con in their city and it did align. And they said stuff that I knew that I didn't put out because I don't put out everything because it's not pertinent. Um, what does he say? Uh, that, that a type of abuse I was, I was exposed to when I was rich. I don't get that last part, but thank you, Chris Mahawk, for the $10 donation. Appreciate you. All right, let's get back into the video. As you guys know, sometimes sleeping is uh, hard for me. But uh, whoa, did you guys hear that? Did you did you hear it? He said sleeping is hard for me, and this is ten years ago, right? This is in 2013, and he just said sleeping is hard for him. And someone was like, "Well, who gave him the Ambien?" I'm willing to bet he had a prescription for Ambien because if we got two videos. And I know you're like, well, it's just two videos. That ain't enough. You really need three to make a pattern. But in each of the two videos, he's like, look, I'm not sleeping. And I believe in the, the video that he talked about um, where his brother self-transitioned, I want to say he said, hey, I haven't been sleeping in that video. I would, have to, I would have to go look back through it and see if I can find it. But it seems to me that he was plagued with sleeping issues. And when you plague with sleeping issues, you look at things. I, I take uh, melatonin from time to time. Because I can't turn my brain off. But lately, I've been exhausted. I've been exhausted. Uh, just to give you a fun fact, right? We're going to get back into the JDF stuff. But yesterday, I stayed up for 48 hours. 48 hours straight. I told one subscriber that. Um, because of this XQC stuff, I had to get the content out. I had to cover it. I had to prep. 48 hours straight, stayed up. Went to sleep for five hours. And after this stream, I got to pack up all my ex wifes stuff because she get it. And then maybe Saturday, I'll just do some light and rest. And then guess what? Um, if you're interested in that XQC stuff, which a lot of people are, uh, mess with me on uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. right before the game start. But when you have things to do, you, you just got to get it done, man. I just, I just had to get it done. But anyway, let's get back to JDF, guys. Let's hear what he got to say about not sleeping. I guess just getting up and knowing that I have this parade and – you know, I'm going to make people happy, but when I make you guys happy, you guys make me happy. I can't stress and tell you enough that I'm just happy and proud to be here. And the, again, people ask why I do it and what, what drives me and motivates me. I think just being a superhero and, you know, being a role model and um, I don't know. I just, uh, you guys motivate me sometimes when I look at Facebook and I read all these posts or positive things. It's just, um, it just makes you feel good. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for that. Um, so he's thanking you guys, man. If you ever met him and people telling me I got to sleep. Yeah, I know I got to sleep. I'm going to sleep tomorrow after she pick up her stuff. I don't think I'm going I'm to sleep a little lighter. He's going to be gone and we'll get to it. But this is a message from JDF. And then we're going to get into his brother. And then we're going to have y'all come up and speak y'all peace. I only got a little bit left, guys. I was explaining to everybody yesterday that we all have problems and we're all not normal. Uh-oh, we all have problems and we're all not normal. We're about to get insight into how his mind works, how he thinks. This is what I, this is what I want to show you. These old videos that I keep going through and just finding little things, 
it is let me let me let me get a little bit bigger um as i keep going through these old videos i keep finding things i just keep finding like little breadcrumbs you know i just keep digging you, you know dig, bro you like to dig. I, I know tony i like to dig but i gotta get to it and i know you like keep it private sure you know? things have to be kept i don't private. i don't want to keep it private because i want people to know that jdf was human he was human you know and people should know it i know he probably like a I was like, Tony, should I keep going? He like, you shouldn't be investigating too much. Oh, gosh, this Tony soundboard is addictive, guys. Um, sound effects are coming. I'm, I'm trying to master them. Um, will I do? Will I? Will I cover more of XQ adapter case? Yes, XQC adapter case is coming Tuesday. I got to creep. I mean, Sunday at 2 p.m. But we on JDF today. Let's get to it, guys. Um, and uh, you know, I give you a scenario of being a crackpot, which I call my brain, because um, sometimes, uh, you know, our brain works differently and um, we're not always uh, perfect like everyone wants us to be. So just imagine if. All right. Did you hear what he's saying? Like he's laying the phone. He's dropping breadcrumbs, guys. Hey, I am not perfect. I know I'm out here. I'm doing this. I'm motivating y'all. But people ain't always who they think they be. Um, people are not perfect. He's saying, I'm not perfect. And I want people to, to see that, okay? We took uh, three pots, okay? We're, we'll, rep we'll represent our brains in the pots. We turn the pots upside down. We have one pot, two pot, three pots, okay? During the day, it looks normal. I mean, you don't see anything, and it's just a pot. So you see one pot that's kind of cracked. And um, so I call it crack pot. You see one pot that's kind of cracked, and you wonder, you know, well, I'm not going to buy that crack pot uh and it's got little cracks in it so it doesn't really stand out in fact it probably looks a little bit worse um than it does so it's not a perfect pot like we're not perfect there it goes again we're not perfect and what does dust dust productions um i believe dust is the sponsor now shout out to dust productions what does he say he says i want that soundboard if you email me you think i'll give it to you of course yeah shoot me an email if you want it and I'll, I'll I'll give it to you guys. I know, I know I shouldn't be investigating this. I know she I got should keep it going. And I know y'all gonna be like, what is going on? Look, I'm just sharing this, right? Tony is gonna be immortal. I'm gonna be streaming 10 years from now, and this soundboard will be here. You know, it's soundboards like, hey, dig, bro. You like to dig. Yes, and I'm about to dig all up in XQC and adapters life. I am about to dig so far up in there. Well, not too far, but just 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 to scratch the surface a little bit adapter but anyway thank you for the donation dust and let's keep hearing what jdf has to say but let's take another scenario we take this the three pots we turn it upside down we turn all the lights out all the lights are turned out and all of a sudden we put lights underneath these pots and when we shine the light what happens these two pots are dark but the pot that's a crack pot delivers this beautiful light through it. And it's got streams of lights and it stands out. And it's one in a million because the way the pots crack is it's never the same. It's not like a fingerprint. And when you turn the lights on, this thing just shines and it glows and it makes you stand out. So I would definitely say JDF uh, had a crack in his pot and he was one of a million. I think he's one of one. I've never um, I've never covered anyone like him. I've never uh, seen anyone like him. And I think people who were close to him knew that he was one of one. If you met him at Comic-Con, he was one of one. Um, you could, you should, I ain't going to say you could see, but I'm sure people felt his energy. Some Everyone has a vibe, right? You meet a person like, oh, you know, they got good energy. They make me feel good. And I definitely think JDF was that for a lot of people. When you're around him, you felt good. You know, it's... It's that one of a kind feeling like, oh, man, this guy has something special. He has that it factor. That's why when he came on Power Rangers, he just stole the show. No matter who we are and what we do and uh, how we are, I think it's important that, um, you know, being normal is just boring, I guess. And uh, no one's perfect. And uh, we all make mistakes. And it's how we deal with life and the whole Jesus didn't tap. Jesus didn't tap how we deal with life. This is... I know I'm excited, but this is really sad to watch considering he's no longer here with us. So uh, that means never give up and uh, strive to be the best we can. 
goals, whatever it is, and it's not a financial thing. It's more, like I said, are you happy with what you're doing? And if you're not, then is it worth just getting paid for and being miserable for the rest of your life? Or is it worth doing what you're passionate about doing, getting paid less, but following it with passion? Because then if you're passionate, then all the stuff falls in place, the money and all this other things. Now, look at this. He was talking about this 10 years ago, guys, 10 years ago. And it's the same thing that he was saying right before his demise. So think about that. Because on the end of the day, you know, what are we going to take when we pass on? I mean, you know what I mean? You can't take your watches. You can't take your money. Uh, it's relationships. And if you live every day like this is your last last day on earth, who would you spend 24 hours with? This is important. And it's not super important today. But when we cover his last day of his life, it's going to hit you guys harder. This clip is going to come around. Last 24 hours of your life, we're all JDF now, right? Who are you spending your life with? Who are you spending your life with? You, last 24 hours, who are you spending your life with? Me right now, not to get all deep and sentimental, but it'll be my daughter. It'll be her. Not my sister, not my niece, not my nephew, not my best friend. It'll be my daughter. But if you marry, it might be your wife. I mean, who's the people that you'll make up in life? Is it your your family or your friends? Because I think it's very, very important that right now, you know, let's just pretend we're living 24 hours. Um, as I look out the window in Atlanta and I'm here at Dragon Con, um, you know, I, I do think of, you know, my family and, you know, kids and friends and, um, you know, my brother who passed away. Damn, man. It's, it's so sad every time he mentioned his brother. Because I know that it just broke him. It just broke him. It breaks him. Anytime he thinks of death, he thinks of his brother. Anytime he thinks of his brother, he thinks of his two friends who are like his brother who took their lives to be together. And uh, it, it, it's just life's too short, you know what I mean? And uh, I would say just work out, you know, reach out to the people that you know right now. And regardless if you're right or wrong, just tell them, hey, you know, I've always cared about you. I'm putting whatever it is aside. You don't have to have a relationship with these people, but, you know, just know that, um, you know, that you've done and tried. I remember, you know, my friend. Did y'all hear that? Even 10 years ago, put the foolish stuff to a side makeup. We're going to touch on this brother and I'm going to reveal something about his brother. And then we're going to uh, let y'all come up. Passed away. Uh, both of them, Casey and uh, Justin Hobson and, um, didn't I tell y'all? Didn't I tell you anytime you think of his brother, he think of the other two people who passed who are together now? You know, I wish, uh, you know, I mean, I wish I had that last talk and that last conversation. But uh, anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for being a fan. Dragon Con, day number two. Um, you guys are awesome. And thanks for listening to my thoughts. All right. Uh, I dropped the link. If you want to come up, sorry, sorry about that. I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong stream, uh, wrong page of my stream deck. All right, so we're about to go look at his brother. Remember that post that got me all choked up because I was reading it and I was broken. Um, has it been edited? Hold on, I can't, I can't find it. Uh, you got to cam up, Momo, if you want to talk. Um, oh, there we go. There we go, right here. This the one that got me choked up. This the one that broke me. Um, share this tab. Sorry, if you're new here, if you wanna, if you wanna come up, you gotta cam up. And if I don't trust you, like last, look. Here's the thing, guys. When I let you come up, I'm putting the stream at risk. When I had the juicers up here, someone did something crazy that killed the stream, and I had to take it down instantly. So, but let's get through this poem. I'm going to read it again because I need to put y'all in JDF shoes. And here we go. All right. So, remember this poem. I'm not going to read it. I can't, I can't even make it through. I'm not going to lie. I can't make it through it. So, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to just read the bottom part. Uh, what did he say? Um, da da da. Um, it's a poem. Just knew it was him. 
feel his healing. I never forget the words you spoke. I want you to live even though you're in his heart is broke. All I could do is cry. It was a dream or I was awoken. But when he told me uh, his spirit was sent free, I said, don't go. I'll come. It's always been you and me. This part right here, I said, don't go. I'll come. It's always been you and me. If this ain't like an indication that he wants to be with his brother, how did Eric Frank pass away? I said, don't go. I'll come. It's always been you and me. But he said, you stay. I'd rather have him take me. So he wanted to be with his brother. And I found out how his brother self-transitioned. And we about to get into how his brother self-transitioned. Now, look, you like... I normally I give y'all proof. I give y'all proof. But I think I've established my credibility with, with the audience who's been with me from day one. And the way Eric tr- self-transitioned, it was rumored peels, but it wasn't. He self-transitioned in the same way that JDF did using his karate belt. So when you think about that and you see poems like that and you see them talking about the Casey brothers, you see them, uh, the Casey and Justin Hobson, how they're together now. And you knew he missed his brother. And his brother self transit the exact same way, not using the same structure as a, a brace for the weight, but it's the same way. OK, same way. Devastating. And it's just, whew, it's hard. So, who wants to come up? Momo, can you hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Thumbs up. All right, you're not going to do nothing crazy, are you? He said no. All right, all right. All right, guys, that's the end of the stream. If you bought the piece out, uh, just like the stream. But yes, his brother hung himself just the same way JDF did. It's, it's, it's hard to say, but I appreciate y'all sticking with me. The stream is over. We just about to kick it with the audience, see what they want to say. And we're going to bring up Momo taking a risk. Momo, what's going on? Yo, it's, it's Moo Moo. Um, Sorry, man. Yeah. Sorry. Nah, this is the Mack truck, man. I fought JDF in his first amateur fight. Oh, Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. So how, how was his character after uh the the fight? What you mean? Like, uh, his character. You fought him. I I I ain't trying to disrespect you, but didn't he win? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be wouldn't be disrespectful to tell the truth. But um okay. yeah, he won. He won with a I'm a plot of arm bar. Okay. Did you did you have any interactions with him leading up to the fight? I met him at uh, I met him beforehand. We we were sparring against somebody that we didn't spar each other, but we was in the same cage sparring somebody that was getting ready for a fight. I knew his trainer Rocky Long. Matter of fact, me and Rocky still cool, but um, so he wanted to fight, and I was just getting started. So Rocky thought I would be a a good opponent for him. Um you know, starting out because he knew that I was I didn't have much ground game and stuff like that. So he just figured I'd be a good opponent for Jason. OK, um, what about after the fight? Did you have any interactions with him? Yeah, it was cool. He was in my corner for every other fight I had. Really? Wow. So you got to have like a JP story. Like a good one, right? I got a bunch of them, but uh Keep it, um, keep it PG <laughs> if you want to share one. Or, or are you about to do this? Certain things have to be kept private. Are you about to do that? No, no, because I ain't even like... <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, um, before I do that, though, the main reason why I came up, bro, like, I've been, I've been listening to your stream, and I don't really want to, like, get too deep in it because it's a lot of, it's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of people going back and forth and stuff like that. And I don't want to I don't want to be like in that type of thing. But I just I earlier when you was talking about uh Sky's mom, I would just ask you to be a little bit more sensitive. I ain't I noticed your show and stuff like that, but it's like 
I don't know, it kind of bothered me, like the way you said, um, <clears throat> when you was like, oh, she got tired. Like, I mean, you know, if she went through all of that, if she got choked out and end up losing control of her, her limbs and stuff like that, like as a parent, you can get tired if you're moving around from place to place, not not being able to take care of your children and things okay. of that nature. So that's all, like, I was kind of, you know, felt some type of way about that, and I ain't trying to come at you in no you know, hard type of way and then like that, but it's just, you know, they, that, that, that's a tough situation, bro. And I think, uh, Shayla did go through a lot and I don't even know. Her. I never met her. Uh, not, not, uh, I never met her even when me and when me and JDF was cool, we never even really talked about her, but just after the fact, like him leaving his family and stuff like that, I Whoa. know they're going to say anything. He didn't leave the family. She filed for divorce. No, no, no. I don't mean I don't mean that way. I'm saying like oh. him him passing away. Okay, okay. And, and you know what I mean? Like okay, so that's all I know they going back and forth, but like you being in a neutral position, like just be as nice as you can about you know what I mean? It's just a little I thing. I get what you're saying. And uh, uh, I appreciate what you're saying. And like I said, I'm not I never try to make fun of sh um Shawnee and what she experienced, even though she called me ignorant and an idiot. Um, but the whole get tired thing, I got an issue with it because look, my mom was a crackhead. She never got tired. She never was like, Hey, I'm too tired. See you kids. And she never got tired. It was like, okay, Henry, you off. I'm gonna keep your sister. So when you like, you know, give her some grace, I'm like, I can give her some grace, but at the same time, how can you give up one kid and keep the other? That's a question. Yeah, like, I know. I, sometimes it, it just goes like that. And that's even with that, that's a tough decision for a parent to make and i i don't i don't i don't think that a lot of those decisions are made maliciously or in a way where somebody is like intentionally trying to do somebody wrong or favor the other child it's usually some some sort of reasoning even if it's even if even if at the time they're not in their right mind it's usually some sort of reasoning that they do to make yeah. that decision so that's that's yeah. what i'm saying like and like i said i don't i know i used to when jenna he used to bring jenna to the gym and i remember her when she was a little girl you know of course i know uh tammy and um all them people my my child still goes to my gym i got a two-year-old he goes to the gymnastics right next door to rska so we stopped by there you know every time i'm taking him over there we'll, we'll stop by the uh the gym to see the them over there where they doing the training so you know we was like i said we was cool man we rode around a lot and stuff like that um i say nigga a lot um so oh, i said on my street <laughs> oh my bad man this, <laughs> hey so i get it uh, i get it it's cool <laughs> we, he used to always joke like you know what i'm saying he he didn't say it of course so he always say my ninja and oh, and stuff yeah. like that because yeah, uh, ninja yeah 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 i get you um so you, was, right. you know we was real cool man and he was he was a uh he was a, he was a tough guy you know what i'm saying like that's i think that's what we liked about each other uh my brother died too so we shared that connection and i used Jeez. to always bring my my uh my kids my two sons my two oldest sons are not mine biologically they they're my brother who passed away so they became my kids after that so they used to be at the gym hey with shout us. out to you for stepping up Oh yeah, man. That's a that's you know that's a must. But um, yeah. So yeah, that's all. That's all it was, hey, bro. I, like you said something. though. you said something. There, there must have been a reason why she signed over one and not the other, and that it, there is a reason. And I'm not gonna mention it. But thank you for coming up, Mac Truck, and telling us to put some respect on Sean's name and sharing your experience with JDF. The, the whole family, though, bro. I don't, I don't like I said. I don't know Shauna. I know, I know Tammy. I've, uh, Jenny. I haven't seen them in a while because me and me and JDF last time we talked was like, I think last year or something like that. But um, you know, just that's all I'm saying. Like when you do it, just if you can't be as sensitive as you can about, about everybody's feelings concerning this whole thing because they all going through a lot. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Thank you, man. Thank you all for right, coming. Man. You, you be, be blessed, bro. You too. You too. All right. That's Mac Truck, guys, everybody. Let's let's give it up for Mac Truck. He 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 stood his ground, yo.
shout out to just T- just ten. You should come up, man. I wish I could express my love and respect for JDF as much as um I mean to. Please be open to your friends and family's emotions of the cool God bless y'all. Yo, just ten for twenty is dropping that heat. Dropping that heat. Uh, Yankee Angel, what happened to you, bro? You you turned off the camera. He was supposed to come up. All right, hopped ninety one. Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, thumbs up if you're gonna be respectful. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, hop, hop. What what would you like to say today, man? No, man. I, just, well, I was listening to your content from uh, Destiny Stream. He was watching you, uh, and I think you got a good thing going, man. You got a cool stream. You got a good cadence to you. I'm a oh, pretty big. Yeah, I, I do. I think the stream is really good. Um, I don't know. I, I was gonna ask you like what direction you are gonna take your your content. Oh, it's always gonna be. Look, here's the thing. I'm I'm happy. You, are you a juicer? Are you? No, I don't, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right, you don't know what that means. All right, so um, it's always gonna be a little bit investigative because I used to be an investigator. So, and I'm going through a divorce, and this channel was established to help men going through a divorce, or going through child support, going through alimony. Even my first video was about divorce. Um, but I don't think people understand how major XQC's divorce is. It's not some little thing. It is the it could potentially be the biggest common law divorce in human history. And no one's covering it. TMZ is not covering it. Uh, major news outlets are not covering it. No one's talking about it. But I'm like, this has huge implications. If Adept can show that, hey, we were married, she's getting millions. I know you're saying no way because people on the internet are like, no way Adept could be married. It's crazy, Ooh. man. That direction, I think, is really interesting, though, because I don't see a lot of content about that. And I'm going through a divorce, too, actually. And it's real oh, rough. Sorry about you. It, yeah, it's hard. Right. To get off JDF, we're going to get back on JDF. Yankee Angel, I see you back there. You're going through a divorce. How hard is it? It's fucking, in, it, dude, it's insanely hard. Are you kidding me? It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. Me too. And, and uh, people don't understand. Okay. And it's, it's like this hidden thing. I feel like one way I've put it is like prior generations had different challenges. Like back in World War II days, it was storming the beaches of Normandy. Our generation of men have like a spiritual challenge. And it's all, and it's very lonely and i have friends and i do well you know i do okay for myself yeah. and you know i have a good job and you know i don't have a terrible time with girls usually even though i look like crap today uh you know but it's not even about like who you have around you it's about the internal struggle you know what i mean it's a very internal process it's just you and, uh, I, I couldn't help you with your divorce if i wanted to no nobody you, no and that's the same for me no one can and no one can help qc xqc but he's been silent so i'm kind of like his voice and I wish someone would go into my divorce and just expose it and be like, hey, oh, what's up? Is this dude didn't even know he was getting divorced. Not even the ring. He didn't get a cake. Nothing. Exactly. So now he has a, a trial where people like they're joking about it. Like, oh, this is the newlywed game. It's not going to stick. I'm like, it, she got she has three things she has to prove. And in my mind, she already proved one. All she ha- all she needs is a text message of him saying we're going to get married and now she's getting millions. She don't care about that McLaren. She don't care about the house. She don't care about the BMW or the Tesla because yeah. it's bigger than that. It's millions of dollars. That's if she crazy. was like, it's exactly. So and I know you have a financial component added onto it. Like I think you mentioned on destiny stream. I saw that you have alimony potentially. You're going to have to be paying. Oh, I'm, paying I'm paying temporary alimony right now. And she's asking for two years alimony and she's trying to, what she's trying to do right now, guys is stretch out the end of marriage date. So I could potentially be on the hook for three years alimony. So instead of a six-year marriage, she's trying to make it a nine-year marriage because we've been separated. About it'll be for it'll be nine years by the time the the judge finalizes it. That's so that's great. what I'm fighting. That's Not absolutely. Kidding, I'm, I'm about to lose over a hundred thousand dollars in total. Not to mention the twenty thousand dollars in legal fees. Not to mention I'm paying child support and I have my daughter the same amount of time. Not to mention. They're having a birthday party that I'm not even invited to. And I can't even tell my daughter I'm not invited to. So when I tell you, like, I'm going through like hell, this is hell. This is therapeutic for me. So what I do with my channel is educate other men like, hey, don't live with a chick. Not, you know, that's not going to say I'm some incel or something. But I'm like, look, XQC lived with a chick and now she could potentially cash him out for millions. But it's hard, though. And this is why it's like our generation's problem is because in prior generations, women didn't leave their men like that. They didn't like all right, look, all right. they didn't pull this shit. We, we, I'm about to, Angel, I'm about to get you. I'm about to just drop this one stat. 
Um, I hate dropping stats. Like, he's gonna dra- he's a red pill guy, he's gonna drop a stat. But like uh prior to was it 1969, it was the 85% of kids were living in two-parent households. Now it's down to 17%. So if you think about that, if you get married and you have a kid, there's a there's a 83 percent chance you won't be in the house. That's crazy, that's man. That's just that's, that's not a problem. good. So hopefully, that's the way children are meant to be raised. It's wrong. Exactly. But wrong. anyway, anything you want to say on JDF? Before I, I, I mean, I, he was my first uh, Halloween costume when I was four or five years old. Go. You know, I'm from that generation. Yeah, me uh, too. <laughs> a lot of respect on him. I was born '91, as my name implies, and. uh yeah, man, it was real sad. I made a post about him on Instagram and uh, right. huge fan of him and the Power Rangers. And I'm a big fan of your stream, dude. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, man. I appreciate the support, man. And good luck with your divorce, man. I know it's lonely. You. Hopefully you come back with a success story and you're still alive. Don't delete yourself, please. No, don't worry. <laughs> That's right. not your favorite, man. <laughs> come All on. Right. Time. All right. Thank you. All right. We got to donate. Yankee, An- Yankee Angel, you coming up next, brother. You are coming up next. Give me a second to... Put some respect on Classic by Candace Henry. We greatly appreciate you. My bro and I met JDF at Alabama Comic-Con in 2018. We felt his love and energy right away. Keep Keeping his fam in my prayers. Thank you, Candace, for the donation. Thanks for sharing your story. Maybe you should hit the link, Candace. You know, tell, tell your story. All right, Yankee Angel, you ready to come up? You, you going to be, can I get a thumbs up for respect? <laughs> All right, there we go. Thumbs up for respect. Let's keep it respectful. And what you, what would you, oh, look at this shirt. Listen, this shirt I got right here, bro. All right. <laughs> I'm looking at the shirt you're wearing. Yeah, I, I just noticed that. But I, my bad, man. No, all right. What would you like to say, man? Man, listen, out of, out of all the guys that we lost, you know, we lost Kobe. We lost Kobe last, like, like, like three years ago, yesterday. Uh-huh. We lost Paul Walker. Yes, you know racing, racing, and, and, and that right there, like that, that hurt because you know he's the only the, the only white man that could go anywhere, and everybody loved him. India, <laughs> Japan, listen, like for, for real, like, everyone did love Paul Walker, though. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Everywhere, honestly, and like this thing with um, this thing with with JDF has yo, it hurts. It, it's to the point, like. Me and my me and my uh new wife, we just moved in here and I had this shirt up here, right? And then like uh-huh. it, it bothered me. It bothered me because I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like all this thing, cause it when I saw when I saw the when I saw the uh the post the first time, I'm like, no, it can't be. It can't be. And you know what I'm saying? Cause you know how the internet is. Yeah. So like I removed it. I I had to take it off, you know, because it, it's sim- it's a lot of symbolism in Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? That you that we gotta watch out, and it yeah. bothers me, bro. So yeah. I have right. to take it down. It, so I know it, it sticks with you, man. And then, like, even even after I do the JDF stream, I gotta take a little break, I gotta step back. So, what would you like to say about JDF before I go to the next person? Um, right? what I want to say is that man, he was he, he was the legend before everything, before the rappers blew up, he was he was the man getting it, he was Mr. Hollywood, Mr. Damn Still the Show, like you said. You feel me? So, Mr. Like, Stilla, he stole the show. He stole yeah, the show. He stole the movie. He yeah. stole his girl. And he beat up, you know, uh, I ain't going to. He was real. He, he like, he was real. Like you saw the, the situation with Jock Claw Van Damme. Van oh, Damme yeah. tried to deny it. You know what I'm saying? He, he, uh, look, he was ready to beat John Claw Van Damme. And no. John Claw Van Damme, he plays tough with movies, but JDF exactly. was really tough. Exactly. But you know what I'm saying? I, uh, as a matter of fact, one thing that you put that, that, that four, that four, um, poem and uh-huh. i told my girl like yo he kind of was rhyming like eminem it sounded like his delivery he like, loved he loved hip-hop man he loved rap but how you call it i i uh sky sky was on live on ig the other day and i quickly you know i hit sky up and i was like yo sky who's who's your who's your rap who's your favorite rapper and i put the question like a whole bunch of questions to see uh-huh. she catches and she said eminem of course and she told me a story. She said a story on live talking about how JDF caught the babysitter and Sky when she was younger, like 12, she said, uh, listening to Eminem and JDF flip. You know what I'm saying? So, but I saw a, 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 a blog that JDF had and he was listening to Eminem racing his motorcycle. And it was deep. Like, yo, listen, bottom line, what I want to say is that 
don't stop, bro. Like you got my support, bro. Whoa, and whoa, whoa, whoa. You dig, bro. You like to you dig. want me to keep digging? Bro, listen, expose <laughs> the truth, bro. Because there's justice, bro. Because it's a lot of foul play. Because <laughs> from from being from from drinking to now having MDN in your system, it it is it, a lot. Like honestly, like I don't it, it sounds like roofies to me. Like it's a, it it sounds it's real deep, bro, and it hurts. So yeah. like you know what I'm saying, like do yeah. keep doing what you it, it hurts, but and I and I never met the guy. But I see yeah. how his energy was. Bro, All right. and, Thank you, I'm man. I'm still watch you, bro. Hey, I appreciate it. Just hit the like button for me, man. Appreciate it. I already it. did. I already All right. Did. You have a good one, man. All right. Shout out to Hercules from the Pantheon. You know, this is Coach Gang up in here, right? This is, you. this is, look, what does he say? From the Coach Gang, giving you respect, do your thing. Thank you, Hercules from the Pantheon. Most people don't know, like, I am Coach Gang. I'm loyal to the Coach Gang. Um, I'm going through a divorce and, Dude, I don't care about picking up women. I don't care about dating. I don't care about people trying to sell me on the benefits of marriage. I needed real life advice. I needed like motivation. I needed to be around like-minded individuals. I need to basically break myself, break my mind. And Coach Gang did it. Thank you, Hercules from the Pantheon um, for the $20 donation. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, we're going to bring up Law and then we're going to shut it down for the night and we're going to leave with that fall poem. So, all right, Law. What's up, man? How you been? Hey, what's up, Henry? You tell me what you what you want to say. Oh, uh, I mean, you was you know uh, doing another stream on JDF, of course, and you know I wanted to talk about you know something that you know he was telling me you know one of the days that I met him, you know, talking about you know my talent and things like that. But uh, for anybody that um, possibly follows me on Instagram, uh, I made some um, Tiger uh, Zord inspired bracelets for like JDF. My daughter must have took it and hid it because I keep it over here, and I don't. I did see a Soul of the Dragon as well, with okay. all his colors, of course. Um, but yeah, I definitely did do a bracelet for Henry. I'm trying to f figure out how to flip the camera around. I, I don't remember how to do it, but uh, I made these Legend of the White Dragon buttons and stuff like that. I'm also gonna be doing some Legend of the White Dragon bracelets, some more for you know people to you know get. So you know, most definitely be looking out on that. Uh, you know, for that. You my huh? man. Did you get a license for them? What's that? <laughs> to, to 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 print that image and sell it? Well, what the uh, the Legend of the White Dragon thing? Yeah. Oh, I mean, these are you know you know on like Google or whatever you know. And I mean, I I actually gave Jason one. I mean, I was talking to him when I had met him and everything, and you know uh, he was like, "That's cool," because like we don't really have any buttons. Like, I gave him one little button or whatever uh, with a uh, white dragon on it, and. Okay. Uh, you know, when I when I gave him the uh, the white dragon bracelet or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it wasn't just like I printed a whole bunch of them and was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. But, you know, Jason, he told me, like, if, you know, I got a talent, don't just give it away. You know what I'm saying? Like, because with that bracelet, you know what I'm saying? I was telling him that I was going to make more for, like, the premiere of White Dragon. But, you know, for anybody yeah, who hey, hasn't seen it. Etsy? Etsy? Yeah. Man. Yeah. See, I probably, right, I probably do, man. Thanks for coming up. Reach out, hit, hit me up on Instagram. All right. All right. Peace. All right. Uh, who we got in the back? Somebody just came in. Winston, Captain. You ready for this girl? You thumbs up for respect. All right. Thumb, thumbs up for you can hear me. This is the first. Well, this is the second female. What's up, girl? Hey. How, you How you doing tonight? You got your bonnet on. You bang, you banging crip. I see a blue flag in the back. No, no, that's my favorite color. Yes. That's okay. my favorite color. Um, I just wanted to be real quick and be like, you know, I respect what you're doing and everything, and I, I love Jason to the moon and back. You know, um, mm -hmm. I met him a few times, and he knew me by name. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, and like there was some times where he would be like, "Girl, why are you on my line? You already met me like ten <laughs> times." You know. But, uh, you know, I just, I met Tammy one time. I think I emailed you about that. And, uh, you know, she seemed cool and everything. And I just want, what I want from this is respect from for him and his family. You know what I mean? I think we all want I, that. I love, I love him. And I, I'm, I've been real sad about his death. His death actually hit me a lot because my father died in February. 
Oh wow! Sorry. Of last year, and he died in November. And uh, you know, he was uh, he was my first crush. I'm not I'm not gonna be ashamed to say Tammy, it. Tammy, she crushed on your husband, Tammy. She was going to see her crush. <laughs> Tommy was Tommy was you know a lot for me. Um, uh-uh. and meeting him was very special. I'm in a wheelchair. I I have cerebral palsy, so right. he was very. He was very nice to me, you know, and I appreciated every time I got to meet him. I appreciated every ranger I got to meet because it wasn't just him. But at the end of the day, I just want his memory to live on. Even if whatever comes out about him, I just want people to continue to respect him and love him for what he did, you know, as as Tommy Oliver, but also as Jason David Frank. Because right. well, to me, he wasn't Tommy anymore. You know? Right, I, you know the crazy thing you say he wasn't Tommy. Um, at first when I first started this, I would say JDF. Now I just say Jason. Yeah, I just because that's Jason. what he was, Jason. He was well, a person you. just like everybody else. Thank so you. Man. I I support I, you digging. I support you digging. Just keep it as right. respectful as you can. You know what I mean? Respectful. You yeah. sure? You sure? What is going on? What What is going I'm, on? You You respecting I'm, I'm, digging? I'm, hey, I'm sure. I want. I, I want you to continue crypto. doing what you're doing. All right. Yeah. I think you're crypto. How how you how you Bye. join crypto and you in the wheelchair? I'm not, listen, listen, listen. Blue is my favorite color. Don't blue is her favorite don't color. Keep it. Okay. She in yeah. the wheelchair. She be see walking in that wheelchair, don't you? I, I know you do. <laughs> I know you All right, Winters Captain. All Thanks right. Bye. Guys. All right. All right, y'all. It's been a great stream. Make sure you like it on the way out. I'm gonna leave y'all with. The fall, you know, that that poem, that poem is fire. That poem is such fire. It's like, I can't even, bruh. All right, let's get through it. Fall. It's been a while since I wrote. I'm sure at times everyone has moped. But this ain't me. I don't want to go back to where I was. All I could do is pray and hope, shake it off. But when I do, my mind says, nope. I mean, how do I deal with this? How do I even cope? I don't want to slide, but it is a slippery slope. I'm struggling, I'm grabbing, I slip because I missed the rope. My emotions are overflowing like a waterfall. The words I speak are positive. Well, at least I think they are. Overall, with stress occurring regularly, it's too fast. It's a hand side. Emotions are throwing like a curveball. But how can you even breathe when the air feels like ethanol? I mean, I want to fight back my mind. I want to brawl, but when I punch, I'm on the ground. I mean, I see the takedown. I begin to sprawl, but I miss. All I can do is crawl, then I disappear, I'm gone, and it's just me, staring at the ceiling wall, I mean, people can see my pain, you can see it in my eyeball, the sun would shine, but the darkness moves in, it becomes a rainfall, I'm all over the place, like a human pinball, so I delay and I begin to stall, please God. <laughs>